Hello, all you wonderful beans out there, and welcome to the stream. I am Raw Zim, and this is Art Martin and Dev Tales, where we've got Wicked Whiskers over there in the bottom left doing some fantastic art. Commissions are open, by the way, everybody. Uh, meanwhile, um, I'm going to be working on the SCAR system with Taldarius and possibly others that may pop in and want to give their two cents. Uh, who knows? But either way, let's go ahead and get started. And probably make this bigger so it's a little easier to read. As big as Faryon? <laughs> no. Not that big, okay. Though, I will say that uh, seeing how big he is uh, definitely lead, lends a lot of uh, credence to uh, Squirrel's ability to avoid getting hit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is funny, because apparently Squirrel is actually the tallest, per the tallest in our group. Yeah, I did not realize that. Uh, yeah, I think... I don't know if... He's like the same height as Kaza. Because Kaza is like three foot tall. A, 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 a lot of first stage bug, a lot of first stage Pokemon are tiny. Yes. Rin Greetings. It's been so long since I've seen you. Hey, hey, could somebody, uh, could somebody, uh, you know, commission Whiskers so I can, you know, give Whiskers a six-month subscription or something so he doesn't have to deal with ads? Or somebody just, you know, gift a sub to Whiskers or something? Just saying. Thank you, Nano. It's Wicked Whiskers. By the way, I just I just had a really funny thought for like the smallest the smallest most totally innocuous prank that I could do. And I'm not going to do it, but like the thought of it is just making me giggle. <laughs> Which is, uh, during, during the side thing, just pop in to the, to the server, make a single roll as vain, and then leave. <laughs> <laughs> just make a single roll, leave, refuse to elaborate. <laughs> that is horrifying. And I kind of want to do it, but I'm not going to just because of the fact that it's, like, a stream thing, but... <laughs> well, Carceris, I do run multiple games. Ah, our modest fellowship expands. Praise of course I have Storyteller Evil inside of me. Nano, thank you so much. Oh, sick! Yeah, thank you so much for that six-month gift sub. Thank you, Nano. Uh oh, I see silly bird hat. So, uh, <laughs> something <laughs> right here later. I really appreciate that, Nano, and I know Whiskers does as well. Hey, if some if somebody already has a subscription, you you can't give them a sub anymore. 
Well, because they, they already have the maximum amount, which is six months. Ah, I see. I was asking because, well, I was just about to do that myself, and uh, suddenly I, I, I wasn't able to, so... <laughs> oh, well. Yep, oh, well. But yeah, no, I th I, it'd, be, it'd be super funny to do, but... <laughs> okay to start with let's go through this list of stuff that you've sent me while offline here yep it's just a couple uh, of things It would be helpful if when, when you do this in the future if you tell me what page some of this is on. Oh, okay. I know I generally don't... where to find it, but... Yeah, I don't, I don't really have, like, the page thing showing. I actually have it on, uh, like, for me personally, I have it so it's not on printable, so it's actually one continuous sheet. Ah. So I'll, I'll, I'll just flicker it on and off to, like, grab the thing, but, uh... Flickering it on, the first thing is on page nine. Yeah, I found it. Yeah, because it says, if the difficulty is four plus, which it technically is always going to be. So we're going to need to say if it's been raised by at least four, like four plus. Or increased because that's the, the standard. No matter how high the difficulty, a 10 is always a success. However, if the difficulty is increased by four or more times, then 10s no longer explode. <laughs> Sound good? Yep. Okay. Uh uh, also, also, Whiskers, I'm just going to let you know that, uh, just a quick reminder that this is a D10 system, but I, I like the idea of him also just coming in with a wrong dice, rolling a nat 20 and leaving. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even in the system, just <laughs> shows up and rolls a 20 and leaves, yes. refuses to elaborate. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> Hoo hoo hee hee. Hee hee hoo hoo. <laughs> Alright. What's next here? Oh my god. <laughs> you're, you're seeing what whiskers, what whiskers did, huh? Yes. <laughs> awesome. They are funny math rocks. Yes, clickety clack math rocks. Uh, the next thing is on page thirty nine. Well, the next thing would actually be the feet thing, so... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was just going chronologically, sorry. Well, chronologically would be the feet thing. About custom feet? Oh, yeah, but, you know, that wasn't, like... It wasn't something to, like, change. It was just more like something, because it was more of a shell. Fair enough. But, yeah. No, we can we can do that right now. The feats are on. Oh, yeah, I already there. found it. Yeah. All right, there's the customization thing on the side where you just click it, but yeah. It's a D12 chart of twelve uh, of twelve dice combos to roll to alarm your players. Lovely.
Art share. No one d ten and say oof. Unfortunately, some of these only work with in-person games, but I know that I've done shit like this to my players in my in-person games. <laughs> Wait, what, what stuff have you done? I uh, look at Archer. Ah. I especially like doing uh, 3, 5, and 12. <laughs> Fair enough. I see. Roll one d six, forty eight, and one d twelve. And if an a and if as say, oh, it's nothing. Roll three d six and silently shake your head. Roll three d twenty. Look at one of your players for a second, and then silently roll another d twenty. I've done shit like those three especially, that kind of shit in my in-person games a lot. Roll 4d10, look alarmed, and then quickly try to cover it up. Yeah. I haven't done that one, because I, I don't feel the need to like quickly try and like, cover it up. One of my one of my favorites that I've done is I've just been I rolled like uh, a couple of bullshit dice and uh, looked over to the corner of my room of, of of the room where I keep my trumpet like when when I play like in real life because the tradition is is that if someone's going to die I have to play taps for them so I look over at the trumpet after rolling. It's beautifully evil, and I love doing shit like that. You know what I might... Because, because there's a doodle and everything of it, I, I guess I'm, like, almost forced to go in and do the, the single vein roll some point tonight. Because <laughs> that was an animation yeah. of it anyway, so... Yeah, but now we, we, uh, you know... Now we're expecting it! Okay, I'll just make it matter then. Congratulations, you've talked me into it. It will now be a <laughs> dice roll that matters. <laughs> okay, next thing to talk about. Bulk system. Yeah. Yay. Which that is right here. Yep. The thing that I'm like, you know what? Like having it be like an L system for anything that's a decimal, like sure. But the part that I don't like is that it's entirely, like, arbitrary where you could carry around batches of nine of them and they don't weigh anything. But once you pick up that tenth one, it, like, it just makes me think of, like, you know, like, carry weight systems in games where, like, you could be at 99.99, so long as you don't pass by 100, you can sprint at full speed. <laughs> I know it's not like that, but, like, you know... It's 
Kind I will of. say the L or the lightweight stuff is a. I uh, it is not per item. It is overall. So you could have a, a gem. Uh, you know, five grenades, uh, and those are still counting towards that same number of ten. Well, yeah, yeah, no, but I'm saying, like, you know, you could carry around nine grenades, and because they're listed as L, they're all weightless still. So that's why I was saying, like, you know, if we do want to go with the L system of it being lightweight, we could still just have it effectively equal 0 0.1, so it's not, like, entirely arbitrary. Hello there, Candy. Um. Alright, but I'm putting you in charge of figuring out uh, exact bulk amounts for everything. I mean, okay, but, you know, I was just saying that, like, if it's considered L instead of it being no additional bulk until you get ten of them, in which case it equals one bulk, we just make each L item actually be point one bulk. But the lightweight still matters because you can have containers that can only carry L items. Like for pat, like I remember you mentioned uh, in there the pouches or other L containers. So what they do is they, oh hey, you know they can only hold items that are considered lightweight, and lightweight items have a bulk of zero point one. Okay. Like, if you really want to use the lightweight system, we just, like, the part that I'm, that, that I don't like is the complete arbitrary limit of 10. So we just make it that it doesn't have, like, it's all zero until you have 10 of them. Just make it so it's 0.1 each. Well, I'm okay with getting rid of the lightweight system. Well, the lightweight system isn't bad per se. It's just I don't like the arbitrary part of it. But we could still have things labeled as lightweight or not and make it so that way only lightweight items could go on pouches and things like that. So we could keep the lightweight system and still have it matter. It's just also, you know... Make it so it's not arbitrary limit of 10, but so long as you have less than 10, they're weightless. I uh, yeah, Carceris, except they, yeah, they, they are weightless until you get to that, uh, 10 of them. Yeah, so basically, so long as you carry around less than an increment of 10, it rounds down. Effectively. So, you could carry around nine lightweight items, but because you don't have ten, you don't cra uh, uh, pass through the threshold, so they all count as zero bulk towards your bulk capacity. But if you pick up a tenth lightweight item, all of a sudden now everything actually weighs the amount that it weighs in terms of bulk. Which is what I don't like. I'm fine with the lightweight system, I just don't want it to be arbitrary up to 10. I'm saying just put everything lightweight equal to 0 0.1 bulk. Which is what it is, it just doesn't have that arbitrary, like, gaminess to it. I'm not saying we have to keep track of everything down to, like, the smallest decimal, but, like, you know, I just don't like that... You know, I could carry around 19 things, and it counts as one bulk. Uh, 
Uh, well, Karstus, we do also have a different classification called negligible. Uh, and negligible is a weight of zero until you have enough of them. Rin, I don't want to deal with decimal weights, but how dare you, this is pedantic. <laughs> it's literally just point ones, and it's what the L's actually weigh. If it's lightweight, it already technically has a, a bulk value of 0 0.1. It just doesn't count until you have 10 of them for some reason. Like, I'm not even proposing that we change, like, all of it to be, like, a bunch of very small decimals that you have to keep track of. It's literally just increments of 10. I mean, okay, yes, it is still technically extra math in numbers, but it's not doing any specific thing that is... Okay, so yes, it is math in numbers, but it's not any more than you're already going to have to keep track of, really. Because you're already going to have to keep track of how many lightweight items you have at any given time, and as you use them, determining if it shifts you to another bulk value or not. Instead of having to check it every single time anyways, you just keep track of it actually, but it's uh, slightly, like, arbitrated to be 0.1 bulk instead of a bunch of different variant bulks, or you having to go, oh, uh, does this put me at 19 light white items? Okay, gotta change my bulk down to 1 now. So, it doesn't... It is doing what we're already doing, but we're just removing the arbitrary thing where you don't keep track of the bulk for some reason, even though it still matters. Well, Ren, if we have it work the other way, then people aren't going to carry around a singular lightweight item. In fact, people would never carry around lightweight items until they had enough of them for it to be quote-unquote worth it. Like, you would never catch anyone carrying around a single lightweight item because it counts as a whole-ass bulk, and for some characters, that's their entire bulk supply. If you, like, at, at like, character start, having a single lightweight item on your person at all means that you are now using your entire bulk supply before you are considered over-encumbered. So, no, we're definitely not doing that one. The current, the current version is better than that version. I just don't like the thing that... Like, I'm not proposing that we change the values and keep track of all of it separately. I'm just saying that every L item should just be equal to 0 0.1. Because, again, every time you pick up or get rid of a lightweight item, you're still going to have to count up how many lightweight items you have and seeing what bulk value that gets you. So you might as well just keep track of it normally. I'm just sitting here enjoying the fact that for once, I'm not having to defend my point. It's the chat defending my point for me. <laughs> yeah, uh, Car Carcerus, the way that it works is that Lightweights are entirely free until you get 10 of them. Then they count as one bulk. So each lightweight item is already worth 0.1 bulk. You just don't count it until you have 10 of them. But it means that you still have to keep track of how many lightweight items you have at any given time to know if you're at the next threshold or not. So instead of doing that and having people arbitrarily carry around nine grenades that are entirely free, if grenade because grenades would be considered a lightweight item, Instead, all you gotta do is go, oh, hey, I'm carrying around nine grenades, 0.9. Yes, Karzris, that is, that is what I'm saying with all of that. Just have it be that it's effectively arbitrated to 0 0.1 of, of, of bulk, 0 0.1 bulk. 
I'm not proposing that it scales any differently. I'm not proposing that we get rid of lightweight items. I'm just saying we have them actually cost what they already weigh and not just have it arbitrarily be zero until you have enough of them. Rin, I literally have explained why multiple times. I don't know what more you want from me. I have explained it multiple times. Ren, it is listed as 0 0.1. That is the actual weight of L items. You just don't count it until you have 10 of them. That, that I'm not applying some sort of, like, strange ruling to this. It's just how it already works. I'm just saying that we get rid of the thing where you don't count them. Yes, I did just say that I wanted to say on the rules that they are effectively 0 0.1. Because they're already 0 0.1 but it's not actually listed out, and you don't keep track of them until you have 10 of them. But you do have to list it in your inventory because you have to keep track of how many lightweight items you have. <laughs> I'm not contradicting myself, Rid. I just think you're not paying attention here. Lightweight items, as they stand, are their own classification of item, and you keep track of how many of them you have. And once you accrue 10 lightweight items, they each combine count as one, one bulk. So each item inside of there counts as 0 0.1 bulk. Because of that, I'm saying we get rid of the random and arbitrary classification that you need 10 of them for them to count, and just have each lightweight item count as 0 0.1 bulk, which is already how they weigh... It's just you actually have to keep track of it now as an actual updated total instead of keeping track of them and arbitrarily going, oh, I have 10 of them now. I now have to actually keep track of the weight because I have 10 of them instead of going, oh, I have nine of them. They're completely free. Because <laughs> oh, again, you can carry I... around nine grenades and they don't weigh a single thing. But if you dare pick up a 10th lightweight item... All of a sudden, those grenades now apparently weigh something. <laughs> so, no, I'm not contradicting myself here. I'm when just you, saying we're removing a arbitrary limitation. When you put it, when you put it like that, it does sound pretty silly. <laughs> yes, it, it's like in Skyrim when you pick up that extra, that extra like flower, and all of a sudden you can't run. Where, oh, hey, you can have nine grenades entirely free, but if you dare pick up a book, congratulations, all those grenades now weigh something. <laughs> uh, Carcer, so the arbitrary limitation, uh, limitation is that ten lightweight items do, in fact, are, in fact, ten 0 0.1 mass uh, bulk items. However, if you have nine of them, they are equal to zero. They are 10 0 0.1 bulk items that have a bulk of zero now, because you only have nine of them. So uh, you That's always, the arbitrary portion. So you always round down, you always round, round, round down even, 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 above, even above five. Well, there is, yeah, also there is a difference, Ren, between that. Because if you have a bulk limit of one and you pick up something and it goes you to the entire next bulk limit. Once you're at twice your bulk limit, you are overburdened now, which is even worse. So with your other thing, you're saying that, oh, hey, they have a bulk of one thing. They pick up one extra thing. All of a sudden, they suffer a minus four to all rolls and can no longer evade any attacks and their speed is halved and every hour you get an extra exhaustion point. So yes, Rin, it does matter and there is a difference. I, I I love I love the I love the little arm wiggle on the on the animation in the works. 
Yep. Also, yes, Cars, so a character's bulk limit is only ever measured in whole numbers. Unless you have, like, something special going on. I'm going ahead and just going with it, guys. Yeah. But I'm gonna continue, I'm gonna I am enjoying... This so I, I think they're a... having a critical misunderstanding here. <laughs> no, honestly, what they're saying I think is they're... literally wrong. What were you going to say, Sim? <laughs> Rin, there is because there's a difference between being over encumbered and overburdened. If you're if you're encumbered, you get a different malice compared to overburdened. Overburdened is when you're double your bulk limit. And with your suggestion, what you said. Picking up a single lightweight item would then make someone be overburdened if they were already at one bulk from something. So yes, there is a legitimate difference between what you're saying okay. and what... There, there is a legitimate difference here. It matters. You're not just able to go, it doesn't matter, you're wrong, because it's the same thing, when there is a legitimate mechanical difference. I am going to say, let's... Go ahead and move on from this subject. Um, see you later, Rin. Bye, Rin. But, uh, y you're both <laughs> right. Both sides <laughs> are right on this. The thing well, is, that is, is that... Technically incorrect. They are different forms of right. What we're saying about not bothering to track the point one would be correct for just keeping it simple. <laughs> you have to keep track of how many you have anyways. <laughs> you have to keep track. You have to know if you're at nine or 10. <laughs> There's the same amount of bookkeeping. Either way, I have updated the rules, so it is a point one. Also, I <laughs> just real quick, because I have to point this out. Rin tried to deflect and say that it was a spitball they threw out a while ago when I scroll up a single screen and they were still talking about it. <laughs> it, it, like, you can't say that I brought this up a while ago as a deflection when okay. you just brought it up again. Okay. I defy you, Rin. You are incorrect. Okay. We're all friends here. Hey, hey, tell Darius, do you see, do you see what Mr. Kid <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I love how there are nine little nine circles. Grenades. There's nine <laughs> grenades, but he picked up a book. Because <laughs> that was literally the example I, I used. You could carry around nine grenades for free, but if you dare pick up that lightweight book, oh boy, they all weigh. <laughs> Hi there, Fetch. Thank, thanks a lot, Whiskers. This was necessary. <laughs> All okay. right, on to the next subject. Yeah. Also, I'm just gonna answer one of Kenku's questions, just because it does it does matter. Um, Kenku, uh, the decimal determines in bulk. The, the total bulk you could carry is measured in whole numbers. Uh, but the decimal would go towards your current bulk. That's that's the difference. That's, that's how it would interact. Your maximum bulk is the same. It is a whole number. Your current bulk will be actually just keeping track with decimal.
All right, so next thing. Boon items. What items? Boon items. Ah. Yep. -er. Yeah, so I know that there's like Boon, Blend, and Bane, but the thing that I want to be careful about is, like, we we do have it, it. We do have the thing. Like, we have an entire thing in our thing where it's like heroes or villains, but with how this is worded and how this works out, if you're a character that is more focused on negative things, like if you're, like, a revenge-based character or if you're a villain, you can't ever get boon items, and you can only get bane items. If you are someone that does things based off of, uh, like, fuel yourself with negativity. Like, you know, space, like, imagine, like, someone is making a character where, like, oh, hey, their family was killed and they're out for revenge. And... So they have, like, from the day that their family died, they got a single, like, shard of a mask that they managed to get off of, like, the killer, and, like, that's all they have. And they want to use that to drive their character forward as, like, a special boon item for themselves. That would only count as a bane under the current rules. Interesting. So, even though we have an entire thing going heroes or villains... It's entirely impossible for multiple different sets of characters right now to get boon items, and they can only get Bane or Blend. So I don't like the thing where it has to be positive or it has to be negative. Because I, I just don't think that that matches with what we have before, where we have an entire thing called Heroes or Villains. Well, first off, that was a tentative title that I put in there that I haven't actually uh, written anything for. No, we, did. we have we have the entire character's set story. Did I actually write that story? Yeah. Yeah, you did. Oh, I guess yeah. I did. Okay. Either way... How I just don't do like... you want the? How do you want it reworded then? All right. Well, the thing is, how are we going to distinguish boon from bane? Well, what we could do is have like boon items be focused on things that uh, drive like some sort of inspiration to the character, where like it inspires them to do something, it drives them forward. It gives them, like, a push to be better in in some manner or fashion. Because uh -huh. that's sort of, like, the, the goal behind it, where, like, you know, it is something that pushes the character forward more. Uh, like, even before it even says uh, that it's effectively, like, an inspiration or morale impact. So instead, we should reword it to be something where it's something that drives the character forward. And then for Banes, it could be more something that, like, distracts them or holds them back or they ruminate on. Which could be positive or negative. Like, you know, it could be something where, like, they're, they could get being held back because, like, they have, like, this framed portrait of their family or whatever and, like... When they look at it, like, they... Or when they have it on them, they have, like, a certain... Like, it's a positive memory, but it's holding them back. See? I think that that's a much better way to... Like, have this function for every type of character. Because I definitely like the idea of... You know, having... Items that 
boost you items that are mixed and items that are effectively like curses on you. But uh, I just want to hold back on the positive versus negative thing because there are entire characters in like a fairly large amount of fiction that base themselves and get stronger from negative emotions compared to positive. Maybe it's probably right. Hey, Paul. And because it is, we do have the entire thing of heroes and villains, we want this to be an open-ended system. I want it to be more of a inspirational versus, like, you know, like, something holding them back sort of dichotomy instead of positive versus negative. Because, you know, there's, like, so many stories out there where, like, a character is driven by revenge. What it... What would be an what would be an antonym for for inspirational? I'm trying to think, trying to think of the word. I am driven by revenge for everyone that has wronged me, including myself. I'm uh, looking up antonym. Uh. I mean, maybe not discouraging, but that's sort of more of the... We'd have it be somber. Somber might work. Mm, inspirational and somber. Yeah, I think that can work. There, is that better? Uh, let's see. Definitely better for Boone. I went ahead and read through all of it again to basically double check that, you know, it all got changed, it all looks good. And so we just gotta update Blend and Bane. I'm not sure what to update uh, Blend with. I think that one's neutral enough on both fronts. Yeah. I was just more saying that because we had to change those. Uh... You never liked the word boon? I mean... These are essentially magic items. And... Yeah. It and boon does just mean something that is helpful yeah. or, like, otherwise beneficial.
I still think that uh, negative experience works for Banes. Uh, maybe if it was, maybe instead of like negative, we go detrimental. I feel like detrimental works better. What about you? That eh, works for me. Yeah, I think that sounds good. I also added the line, these are items with stories that hold the character back in some way. Yep. Really, Nana? You never really hear the word boon? Huh. Oh, That's, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, I, I hear it, like, all the time. Same here. I mean, to be fair, Dado, this is a game. <laughs> yeah. Also, I hear I hear it like a lot in books. It is said like all the time in books. I didn't want to call these magic items because they're not actually magical. A magic item would be something that, you know, anyone could pick up the item and gain the benefit of. Whereas with these, that's not the case. Uh, with these items, they are... Intrinsic to the character. They're mundane yeah. items that carry with them a story that means something to the character. Yeah. Hence, I didn't want to call these magic and cursed items. Because they're not actually magical. Somebody else picks it up, and they're not going to be affected by this. Yeah, makes yeah. sense. detrimental again somewhere else. Yeah, I agree, Carcerus. Malice is a uh, lesser-known word, and I know Taldarius likes to use it, but uh, I personally prefer to use... Uh, I, I personally lean towards using penalty instead of malice. I like malice. It's a good word. It is. But it's also not used very often in any uh, tabletop game. It's always penalty. I like malice. Malice is a good word. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
All right. Uh, good time to get started on maneuvers, then? I'm doing the last thing that you messaged me about, which is intrinsic uh, feats. Yep, makes sense. So, uh, Nano, do you need malicious? Or do you mean malice as in this malice? Okay, yeah. So, uh, M-A-L-U-S is something that is, like, that that's different than uh, M-A-L-I-C-E. Intrinsic feats are feats that can only be taken at character creation or when a character goes through a growth or evolution. These are feats that are part of the species rather than something that can be trained. Uh, sounds good to me. Yeah, that sounds good. And I put that into the feats section. Whoo! And while we're at it, I suppose there's one other thing to update because you kind of slightly brought it up, but also didn't exactly. Because drawbacks are something that we're not going to have actual rules on. Yeah. So you just call it a narrative drawback. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm just going to put a explanation box right here on the character creation page. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, narrative drawbacks. Every character has a flaw. They have some manner of drawback that hinders them in some way. It could be an addiction. It could be some form of mental illness. There is no list for these as it, this is something that has no mechanical impact on the game outside of what your storyteller puts in. But they are important for fleshing out a character and making them feel more alive and real. 
Sound good? Yep. Yep. All right. God damn it. <laughs> I saw this document shift. <laughs> <sighs> There we go. The text is smaller in there, but I don't care. <laughs> nice. Makes it fit. That's that, that's what I care about. All right, now on to maneuvers. Um, so we've got combo in here, we've got assist, we've got brace, I know I had other ones on the list lower down. Yep. Uh, we also have uh, movement in now. Yes, yes we do. Uh, you were, were asking about a sprint maneuver. Yeah, if I want to have like a dash or a sprint. So, at least for D&D, &D, um, sprint or dash are just, you're using your main action for moving as well. And it's just the same. Which is already covered in this system because you can just use two movement maneuvers. Uh, well, no, because in D D like Pathfinder, all that it's like four times your movement speed unless you're wearing like heavy armor. Ah, you're wanting something like that. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Like, where, like, you can move extra, but, like, with some sort of, like, drawback. Well, what are you thinking for that? Well, first, I hadn't put that much thought into it because I didn't know if we wanted there to be one in general for that. But one thing that I was thinking of is where, basically, like, you can move double your movement... I'm just like, you know, whatever, whatever that is. Uh, however, you can only take movement related actions that turn. So, like, you know, you double your movement, but you can only do movement related actions. If that makes sense. All right. And I guess it could, um... Well, we would probably make it be a double action. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, But I mean, like, you know. Uh, it, that's to stop you from gaming it with uh, things like quick actions. Okay, well... Well, actually, that's a good point. Uh, let's scroll up here and under actions... We're going to add in full actions.
Uh, that is actually explained right here, Kenku. Yep. Uh, in the actions section under chapter six. Currently on page 47. Uh, dropkick is something that will probably be under the martial arts uh, thing whenever we get to that. But that's uh, honestly very low priority anyways. Yep. Dropkicks are funny, but like, you know, we're more focused on actual mechanic. Yeah. Oh, hey, Arzy. Hi. Arzy. Awa. Hello there. I hug everyone here. Hugs the Odyssey. How is all? Snick hugs. Oh, I'm alright. Just working on the scar system. Alright, I put in here full actions. Full actions are anything that consumes the entirety of your turn. A full action will use up both of your standard actions as well as your quick action for the turn. You will still have your reaction available for outside of your turn, though. Yep. Alright. That way we can specify that the sprint would be a full action. And, you know. Yep. There are defined rules for that. Hell yeah. Pet the space puppy? I'm not puppy. It's the will of the chat, apparently. Well, it's been the will of my chat ever since I got the new model. Oh, is that your current uh, icon? Uh, partially. But yes. I can see why they see Space Puppy. Ah! Sorry, just call it it like I see it. Uh, <laughs> I'm dying on the floor. L. And Pat's the artsy. It's okay. Puppies are adorable. I mean, okay, but I'm I'm not I'm I'm Durgan. I'm I'm no. I I I'm fierce. I'm cute, adorable, fierce. I'm not puppy. I am hatchling. Hatchling is adorable. See, and it's it. puppy. See, he even barks like a puppy. No, I'm not. No, 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 no I don't. I mean, you <laughs> definitely peaked your mic, but it, what did come through sounded like a bark. No, it was me screaming loudly, but not wanting to scream too loud.
Uh oh. <laughs> Whiskers has sent me saying, I love that dragon design. Cute puppy dragon. No, I'm not puppy. Yes. No. No. It no. is a wonderful design. Cute though. hatchling. There. Hatchling. Well, yes, it's an absolutely lovely design that. Puppy trying uh, to defend being cute. <laughs> I'm cute, not. Oh my god. Very marketable. I mean, you're all blue. I'm go of course, I'm going to say you're cute. Yay. But. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Are you alright? Oh, of course I missed it. Ah! What happened? Uh, You're breaking the Urzi. <laughs> exactly. So, what penalty do we want to the sprint maneuver? Because I feel like there should be some other penalty aside from it just, you know, being a full action. I feel like there should be a defensive penalty for, like, the next turn or something. Or until their next turn. Um... Mm. Make it so you can't evade, or it has a penalty to evasion. I mean, it's really hard to evade shit while at a dead sprint, so. Yeah. I definitely don't want to do it as no evasion, because even though it's hard to evade something, you are still moving quickly, so it can be hard to target you anyways. But have it have their evasion. Yeah, I think half evasion would be good. Thank you, Kenku. Alright, I put in here, the sprint maneuver is a full action that allows you to move up to four times the amount of movement that you can normally take with the movement maneuver. This particular maneuver does not have its own upgrades as upgrades to the movement maneuver also impact this one. This maneuver does have your evasion score until the start of your next turn. Sound good? I figured having it call back to the movement maneuver would be best. Plus, it also makes it so, uh, like, with the movement maneuver, um, I, I feel like they should still be able to sprint in armor. Just, yeah. you know, it's going to be decreased like the movement does. Yeah, that makes sense. And there is one emote done. Nice. Let's go. Yay. Just a reminder, Yay. everybody, commissions are open. And I will say that Whiskers could use some uh, 
grocery funds, so if you would like to commission something, please consider doing so. All right, so we got the fact that we want a sprint thing figured out. Uh, next one to go over is going to be disengage. Uh, that one I am thinking of just doing away with because we have uh, the five foot step. All right. Uh, then we're on to dodge. And, oh, just wanted to make sure. Any disagreement on that? I mean, we have a five foot step to get out of threatened range. Five foot step got threatened range. This doesn't. It sounds right. It sounds yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, it's pretty much the same thing as a disengage, so I'm not pointing having both. Okay. Just wanted to make sure there wasn't any disagreement on that. Yeah. Fair enough. Was just, uh, you know, yep. posting in SCAR announcements that we've done that. I'm Fair. wanting to make use of the SCAR announcements more to announce things, you know, important additions and whatnot. Yeah, honestly, that's fair. Uh, actually, before we move on to Dodge, just because of alphabetic order, I'd kind of like to go over Cleanse. Yeah, I thought we were calling it resist, but yeah. So oh, is is that that thing that we discuss that we discuss on the on the whole episode where Squirrel ran away? I, I, uh, no, that, that's a different thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, cleanse is a maneuver for getting rid of penalties as well as allowing you another the, the reason why we went with cleanse was it includes resisting stuff but it also allows you to get rid of penalties mm. hey there spooky how you doing Greetings. um you know you got that minus two penalty to accuracy you can use cleanse to get rid of that uh, you got... Well, you know, have to get rid of it, but yeah. Uh... Well, I guess that's the discussion, then. Uh, yeah. what exactly is going to... Actually, let me, uh, do this. Get a spot to make notes on this. Now, sometimes Google Docs, when I hit enter after setting a heading, it goes back to normal text. And then other times it's like, no, you're still going to be in the heading text. Yeah, it, it's that, weird about it. That is weird. It does that, though. Yeah. 
All right, so how do we want cleanse to work? All right, so there are a couple different ways that we could have it work. Um, obviously, it should affect ongoing status effects, like it should allow you to attempt to resist it. Or cleanse it, I guess. Um, did we also want it to work on dot effects? Uh, yes. All right. I was thinking that considering you are using an action for this, you could attempt to, you know, remove ongoing status effects as well as other things. All right. Do we want to have them choose or do we want it to be everything currently affecting? Everything. At least that's right. what I think. I guess we could have that as an upgrade. Yeah, I feel like that should be the upgrade to it, that it affects everything currently affecting you. Yeah, if, if, it, if it was a base, just every, being able to resist or quest everything, that would be like too powerful at the beginning. In my opinion, at least. So, yeah, I definitely think that that should be included just, you know, as, like, the the big upgrade for it. Um. So, do we also want it to affect stat changes? Yes. All right. How much? Um, that is a great question because there are a couple different things that I can think about for it. Where, like, you know, you try to remove one decrease stage of like every negative you have, or maybe you move all things one stage closer to zero, that could work. So, like, you know, you're getting rid of negatives, but also positives. I don't know if we want to do that. Um, I'm leery about having it, like, completely cleanse, like, one status thing, because then, you know, like... It can get a bit tough and, like, sort of removes the reasonability of ever putting a debuff on an enemy instead of just buffing yourself. Yeah. We don't we don't want we don't want to make um ailments useless. Yeah. I would definitely say it should be one stage closer to zero. Um but I don't think that uh cleanse by default will impact positive things. All right. Because, again, we don't want it to... I don't see a reason for it to penalize them, you know? That yeah. hard work buffing themselves. Or, you know, an ally buffing them. Mm, that kind of... That, that, that Actually, that, that kind of sounds like... An, inter an interesting and interesting ailment, Have, having it so that if you resist, if you resist something, you also get rid of get rid of your positives. Yeah. All right. Um. So we want it to affect things like dots. We want it to affect status effects, and we want it to affect negative stat changes. Is there anything else that this should try to cleanse? I'm trying to think of anything else that could be, you know. I guess we could uh, allow it to potentially reduce the effects of exhaustion by one stage. Mm. 
Ah, uh, no. Because the thing about the exhaustion is that that's not like an extra effect on going onto you, it's just how tired you are. Eh, that's fair. It's not like an extra effect that could be, like, cleansed. It's not some something affecting you as in, like, an external source. It's just you depleting yourself. Or the circumstances having depleted you. Though, actually, a thought that just occurred to me... Um... Going down to the death and down section. I know we're jumping a little bit, ADHD brain and all, but, you know. Uh, you know where I've got it that you can still make an action? Yep. Perhaps instead of it costing you a death failure, it should be, a like, two points of exhaustion? That's for half a stage of exhaustion increase. Yeah. That way it's not like, oh, I'm pushing myself closer to death, but you are definitely taking a penalty there. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. You're basi basically turning in bigger to, to, to cleanse yourself from, from, from stuff. Yeah, I, li I like it causing exhaustion. Yeah. You may perform... We are going to change it to one... Standard or quick action. One standard or quick action per turn, such as a healing move, but doing so will cause you to incur two points of exhaustion. There. That way it's not pushing you closer to death and still makes it so you can do something while you're incapacitated. Yeah. But it's a, you know, it's still a penalty. Yep. Rank up. Hold the line. This hamlet shall not fall. Zorky, thank you very much for that raid. Welcome in. How was your stream? Greetings. Nice, nice. Glad you had a good stream. We are currently working on our Scar tabletop system, and we also have Wicked Whiskers here doing art, and they are open for commissions if anyone is interested. Do message me on Discord or Telegram or such if you would like one. Ideally Discord, but Telegram's an option as well. I just may not notice as fast. <laughs> Noted. I haven't checked Telegram ever since I got home. I know, don't check it often. Hmm. Oh, I should get going, I have. Unwavering. I'll purpose. see you all later. Later. Okay, bye. 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 -bye. Minecraft vs. Live, thank you very much for that follow. Okay. Well, you have come to uh, my stream, Minecraft. Uh, we do 
all sorts of things here. Lots of tabletop games. Right now we're working on a tabletop system that I've been working on for over a year now. Uh, actually, I guess it's closer to a year and a half now. Jeez. Considering I started October 2022. Um, but anyways, yeah. Uh, we also have art going on. Uh, yes, Zim. That, that's, uh, me. That be him. I am confused. But anyways, um, so, allows you to resist ongoing status effects or remove dot penalties, uh, upgrade, remove everything, removes every, it moves negative sta stat changes towards zero, um, uh, here, I'm gonna reword this like a tiny bit just to, well, these are mostly not, uh, dots, but, or notes, <laughs> yeah. Status effects. Uh, there we go. That's the list of things that it will oh you were refer okay that makes more sense i was a bit confused when you were like the stat changes and dots and i'm like huh okay not sure what he means but yeah that well, makes more sense damage over time isn't a status effect it's yeah yeah i was uh thinking you were meaning like the minus two dot penalty to accuracy oh no no i was talking about actual dots like yeah damage over time effects because you said that you wanted this to originally like get rid of the damage over time effects because you wanted them to be able to be resisted because they would cut through integrity okay well that makes much more sense now uh what do like I think removing negative stat changes oh crap no undo or, uh, well I it doesn't think... remove it like you know turns it down a stage but like that's just the list of things it'll do yes yes what I'm trying to say here is the negative stat changes I think will be just something that you can do without needing to roll anything it's just auto auto success on moving towards zero yep um allows you to resist ongoing status effects obviously that has a resistance thing uh, a resistance roll same for damage over time yep uh either way it's going to be something expertise integrity as i feel like that like makes the most sense here what about you? Yes. So for the dot, it'll be based on what kind of, like if it's uh, body or mind, and then for status effects, it's just going to be soul. Unless it calls for something special, but like that's going to be the default. Minecraft, I am not drawing. That is uh, my good friend, Wicked Whiskers, who is doing the drawing. Uh, I am working on our tabletop RPG system. Hello there, Merle. Uh, hey, commissions Merle. are open for Wicked Whiskers. Uh, just message me if you would like something on Discord or Telegram. And yeah, uh, that's basically where... I uh, explain tabletop? What do you mean? Think Dungeons and Dragons, but we're making a custom system from the ground up. Yes. Hello there, King Red.
Well, if you want to read through the system, we uh, we have it on a document right now. If you go to scar dash like the dash symbol, srd.com. Yeah, I'm sorry, Minecraft, but I'm not going to be diving into how literally everything works when it's a almost 100-page document. Um, but it is available for reading and playtest and whatnot. Hello there, Balasar. All right. But we're good with the whole, uh, you know, it being uh, body or mind for the DOTs and for uh, soul for status effects. Uh, yes. Cool. I'm thinking maybe without the upgrade, they can do a status effect or a, a damage over time in addition to a stat change. But then the upgrade will allow them to attempt to remove all of that. Um. <clears throat> Just to make it a bit more useful, because... It is an action to attempt to do one of, to get rid of one of these, and if you fail, it's like, well, I just wasted my action for that. Yeah, but it's the same for um, like inflicting it in the first place because they have to go against your soul save in order to even get it on you. True. And now you can actively resist it on your turn. True. Yeah, we can stick with it as is then. Yeah, to resist one of those. Just guaranteed with stat changes. Yep. Alright. Well, I got the notes for the cleanse. I'll rewrite it all later. Alright. I'd like to... I want to get the notes down and then I can rewrite them probably off stream or later in this stream whichever because that way we can make more progress yep makes sense to me all right next up then would be dodge action the dodge maneuver uh, let me bring up on my other screen that one uh, instead of save for half uh, we are going to raise the difficulty to hit the user by one Because we don't really have save for half mechanics. But this would act as a counteraction to stab moves. And also gives it uh, comparability to uh, bracing. Because bracing makes it so you can't get crit. So we want to have something that's actually worthwhile on dodge to make it worth using. Compared to brace. Right, give me a moment here. Sorry, I was bringing things up to shift over to that, and yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. We don't really have save for half attacks, right? Yep. Anything for that right now. So, yeah, that's kind of deprecated. Uh, what and was it's your... also why I like... My, my, my suggestion for it was raising the difficulty to hit the user by one stage. So, like, it would go from sevens to eights normally, 
which is strong, but also this would counteract someone using a stab move, because it'd go down to six, then back up to seven. Ah. I like that. That way it's impactful, because, like, you know, compared to Brace, Brace means you can't get crit no matter what. Yeah, I like that. So, dodge, making it so it raises the difficulty to hit you by one, you know, that gives it, like, some parity. Yeah, that makes sense. It puts it on the level. And then obviously it'll still like raise up their evasion scores by one. Oh, backing up to cleanse. Yep. How do we want it? Because we do have it considered a defensive maneuver. But part of its purpose was to get rid to give them a chance to get rid of that minus two penalty to accuracy. Um which I feel is kind of different from negative stat changes. Do we want to just say this also removes the penalty to accuracy and does not build it? Or what do we want to do with that? Because that was kind of the um, purpose of cleanse in the first place was getting rid of that penalty to accuracy for using defensive maneuvers. Yeah, although that was with the... The original idea for that was also saying that, like, if you're cleansing, you can't attack. Because then otherwise, like, you know, you just build up the defensive maneuver penalty and then cleanse an attack on the turn that you actually want to attack, so you have it for free. Um. Hmm. Uh, Gimmond, it's not entirely, this is just the Cliff Notes version, uh, it remo it reduces your penalty by one stage. So if you're at, like, a minus four to accuracy, it goes to minus three to accuracy. It's not, it's not all negatives, it's just one stage, this is just the Cliff Notes version. Um... I'm thinking that even though it is a defensive maneuver, it will not increase the penalty to accuracy, but it will allow you to reduce it by two. Yes, but it still counts as a defensive maneuver, so you can't combo it with Brace Dodger Parry. Exactly. But yeah. whatever you want to do with your other action is up to you. Yeah. All right. Let me put that in here for notes. It removes one stage of defense. Man. Penalty. Does not increase penalty. That way it's not fully getting rid of that penalty to accuracy. It's still counted as a defensive maneuver. And yeah. And that will be in addition to whatever else you're doing. Yep. All right. I just, like, you know, gave extreme cliff note version of dodge. Uh... Sounds good. Because it basically it's just brace, but for that, and that that's the only difficult difference. Yeah, that looks good. Uh next up would be Perry. 
So, my original plan for Perry is going to be... It's going to be similar to... Oh, right. Dodge should be down here, actually. Yep. ADHD brain go burr again. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. It's not exactly the hardest thing to move it to where it should be. Yeah. But it was still, like... That was definitely an ADOS moment. Yeah. That was fine. <laughs> Alright, so next up would be... Perry. Martin Brinkober. <clears throat> uh, so Perry is something that you'll be able to use with weapons or with moves or... Uh, it's kind of our version of the Clash from Poke Roll, except it's it's a defensive maneuver, but it allows you to basically stop an attack coming in by you know hitting them hitting their attack basically. That, that's the idea of a parry. Um, you roll opposed attack rolls, and if you beat their accuracy, then you just stop the attack. Plain and simple. E. Yeah. But we also want to allow it to be used, like, based on where you want it to be used. Like, do you want to parry the accuracy with the risk of it, like, you know, going through anyway? Do you want to parry the actual damage so like you know it won't be below uh hit like uh chip damage but hey now you have the opportunity to like reduce a big hit i say the accuracy stage because that's typically where a parry comes into play you know when you are sword fighting you're not necessarily trying to reduce damage, you're trying to keep them from hitting you in the first place. Yeah. Well, when I do it, normally it's just attempts to, like, make the blow not be as clean. It's actually really hard to full-on, like, negate a hit and, like, make it miss entirely, but it's a lot easier to, um, like, take the power out of it, I guess I should say. Low but... like river. <clears throat> Don't be like stiff tree. There we go. Hello, Rygon. Hi, Rygon. How's everybody? Doing good. Working on Scar. Oh, okay. Rygon, cute. And yeah. I'm just and I'm just here hanging out and playing some Pavo. Oh, yeah. I see. Um, but yeah, one of the reasons that I didn't want to just focus on accuracy is because things like extra effects like from soul moves which are like on the list of things that can be parried uh it's a lot more difficult if it's just during accuracy sage to parry then you know what i'm saying you know Because uh, right. specifically, like, going against, like, the soul save is a power action, which is different than accuracy. So if you can only parry during accuracy, then you can't really parry a soul move. I was kind of thinking that you wouldn't be able to parry a soul move. Because uh, it's kind of... Soul moves aren't exactly considered attacks. Well, they're considered an offensive action, but... Yeah, but yeah. they're not exactly... They're considered more like jazz. <laughs> you like jazz? Uh, they're not exactly a... They're, they're not exactly a... Uh... 
trying to think of how to word this. Uh, they're not exactly an attack. They are... Like, for example, Growl. Growl would be a soul move. You can't exactly just use your sword to, you know, parry them growling at you. <laughs> well, you have to use... Well, no, because the thing about at least what I wrote down for parry is that you have to, like, prepare something of like kind. So if you want to parry a soul thing, you have to have a soul thing as your selected parry and have one ready. So you wouldn't be I... parrying it with a sword, it'd be with like another another like status move. Or I stat change move. I think for the sake of keeping it simple, we're going to limit it to physical and special moves. I do like the idea of needing to prepare the specific variety. Yeah. Because when you take the action, uh, like with what I wrote down, you need to select which one you're going to be going against. So you're like preparing for one thing. And if it's something else, then it's not really going to work that well. Because it's not what you prepared for. Yeah. Um, plus with the upgrade, my plan was repose. Yep. So, you know, you could then, you succeed in your parry and then you get to hit them. Yep. Um, so I, I, I say, I still say that soul moves cannot be parried. I, I think it would be the simplest thing make it easier on rulings and such. And... I get, I get what you're saying, but I also, like, you know... I, I also really like the idea of having it be, oh, hey, you are able to parry a soul move if you have one prepared, and, like, all that. So I get what you're saying about the ease ease of use thing, but I also really like the the flavor of just the idea of being able to do that. I understand that. I am still feeling. Also, hello there, Orca. Good to see you. Greetings. Hello. I I still feel like it'd be better to keep this simpler. Just. Only physical and special. You know what? How about we could we could always like just kind of like middle ground it and go that being able to parry a soul move would be like something something feat. That way people could do it if they really want to, but it, like, you know, it's not like a base part of it. Well, it's more trying to come up with... Yeah, that could work. Um, we can put the specific rules for how that would function in the feat. Yeah. Because by default, I think accuracy is probably the best uh, setup there. Because... Like, even if you are just trying to turn the move from being a direct hit to more of a glancing blow, that is still an accuracy thing that you're trying to pull off. Well, not really, because accuracy is all or nothing. It, I mean, I guess technically speaking, there's like the crit portion of it, but accuracy is effectively all or nothing, so... Like, either it hits or it doesn't. So you're still saying that it should go against uh, the actual power of the move? I think you have to decide which one you're going to prepare for. I definitely like don't want to limit it that much. Like, I, I'm good with them having to decide if they want to do physical or special, but I don't want them to have to decide, okay, I'm going to be parrying their accuracy or parrying their uh, power. 
Well, then we you could just have them decide, like, at one point during their parry, like, which part they want to parry. So they could decide to parry it during accuracy, or they could decide to parry it during power. So if you don't want it to be a uh, thing where they have to, like, guess, then just have it be something where they decide when to use it. I'm lost on why this... I, I'm lost. <laughs> on, on why we want to make it that particular. Like, considering... But Considering chip damage exists, why would you ever want to try and parry the power instead of the accuracy? Uh, because of moves like Hyper Beam that are likely to cut through your integrity. Like, just the, the idea of a move like Hyper Beam. Take the edge off of the damage, so that way every single damage you take off of it is less damage that'll actually go past your integrity. Yeah, it won't save you from chip damage, but it'll stop you from a massive blow from being as absolutely rib-shattering. Well, yes, but stopping it before it even hits you is the better option. Okay, but uh, it's, again, all or nothing, so you're gambling on whether or not it hits you or not. And if your parry isn't good enough, it's going to hit you full force, and you have effectively done nothing with your parry action. See what you're saying, Tao. I mean, obviously, it's better to make it so the attack never hits you in the first place, but that isn't always... Not you're sure. gambling that you're going to reduce their accuracy below your evasion when that might not be the case. And yeah. if it hits you anyway, then you're going to get hit by the full damage. So you might as well have done nothing. So that's why I want to give people the opportunity to go against damage as well. Because, yeah, that won't save you from chip damage. But it could take the bite out of an extremely powerful attack about to hit you. Especially, like, you know, let's say, oh, hey, these enemies right here are about to do a combo attack. That's going to have a lot of damage on it. I'm going to prepare a parry for it. And I'm not going to be able to stop their accuracy, but I can take the bite out of the damage. Because every damage, like, of, like, a big combo attack that is oncoming, like, every bit of damage on it that goes past your integrity that you reduce with the parry is damage you're actually just straight up getting rid of. So, I've gone to looking up, you know, the actual definition of parry, and it's... A uh, defensive move intended to change the direction of an incoming strike to make it miss its intended target, rather than block. A lot of them are referring to block or evade. It's... Yeah. Well, because the thing about parries is that, like... Part of the thing about it, like, at least historically... At, at least historically... Um... The, what you'd be... It basically, parry means, like, to turn aside something. Like, to ward it off. But the thing is, is that a lot of times, uh, attacks were targeted towards weaknesses in armor. So knocking it away from that weakness would just have it hit the armor and, like, hit an area that is much better defended or miss you entirely. But it did also come with the, like, intention to hold it off or, like, reduce the effectiveness of it. The way I look at it is this. Everywhere I have seen the use of the word parry, from video games to fencing to martial arts to everything, it has always been to completely negate an attack. To deflect it and just not let it hit you.
Well, the thing is, is that the word parry also means to ward something off. And if you're warding something off, that also comes with it the definition of preventing from harm. So if you're reducing damage, you're also preventing from harm, so you're still parrying it because you're warding off something. But again, the reason why I want it to be able what? to reduce damage is because, you know, as is right now, this we have no real mechanic for reducing damage of a big hit. There is no mechanic that we have that does that. Brace. Oh, Brace was supposed to do that. Brace reduces one damage. Then make it reduce damage like you were saying. Brace, can, it, Brace is supposed can... to protect against critical hits. And it does that. It doesn't do anything against big attacks that deal a lot of damage. It reduces one damage. Why not have, like, a block ability, then? Because that's what the parry was supposed to be. When I made it, that was what the parry was supposed to be. It's literally in my suggestions thing. No beer is cute. Well, at the end of the day, it, 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 it Zim's call. Yeah. I'm still saying that it should be able to... They can decide when they use it, but they can elect to use it either during accuracy or damage. What what does it hurt them allow like allowing them to use it during damage instead of accuracy? Very well. Because it's going to work the same regardless. It's just you could use it either in accuracy or in damage. So how's your day been, uh, Rygon? Boring and frustrating. The state kept running me around in circles, trying to figure out who I should actually be talking to about my, uh, my paperwork. Ugh. For the supervision. It's like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll send you over to this person, voicemail. Oh yeah, we'll get you a phone number, phone number doesn't connect to anything. That sort of, that sort of frustration. Ugh. Sounds awful. Yeah. But, I mean, on the other hand, I mean, I might be working with an artist on getting some TF arts in, so that might be kind of fun. Nice. Yeah. I will and say Raharu, Whiskers is we'll, open. We'll definitely chat. Yeah, but Whiskers is a little bit above my pay grade at the moment. Oh. Sorry, Whiskers. I appreciate you, though. Uh, what 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 do you, what do you said right on earlier? I said you and I. Well, we're gonna have to chat now that I'm home. Obviously not here though. Yeah. Um, let me think. Ah, but Whiskers is pretty tempting though. 
I'll tell you what. I'll take a Whiskers Com if someone can give me a really good freaking idea. Snack. Mm. I've already done a snack with Whiskers. More snack. Uh, do you have your new adoptable yet? Yeah, what about... I what don't have the Anthro version, but I have the Feral version. Do you for that? You, you should... Yeah. You I'm should... Get that first. You should TF into a peacock. No, I'm and good. I I do like the idea of the answer of, of the of the feral chilean though. Okay, yeah, we can probably work with that. All right, let me go ahead and get all the details to you then, Zim. Cool. Okay, so accuracy, it's just if you beat their accuracy, it stops the attack, right? Yep. Well, does it have to... What I thought is that it would reduce whatever accuracy they go, so if it goes below your evasion, then, you know, you can ward it off at, like, enough to dodge it. But if it reduces it to zero accuracy, then it wouldn't incur any hit stun, I guess. Unless we want it to still incur hit stun. Wave. Okay. What should should this be? Meh. Alright, I am putting in may use reaction to parry another attack or affect both. Okay, wait, hold on. Parry itself is not going to use uh, reaction. However, you could use your reaction to parry a second attack or uh, affect both po accuracy and power. All right, let me just read through it again. So I was thinking that it would basically, like, parry, I was thinking it would be like a one-off. Like, you could choose which attack to parry, but you could only parry, like, one attack a turn normally. Well, yes, so, but... Well, you say parry moves coming in, so... Instead of parry a move. So that's why I was... Yeah. I'm going to use reaction to parry another attack or effect... Effect. With... Mm -hmm. should, what should the trigger be? That's a good question. Trigger. Trigger. Yeah, it's like trigger or pose. Um, 
My issue with the this was the idea was the upgrade would be repose. And if we're just reducing their accuracy, like how is that going to then make it so you can then counter? Well, you could always have it be that like you're trying to... So there's like a lot of different like historical treatise things that uh, like affect this sort of thing, but it's sort of like there are a lot of treatises that include move maneuvers and moves that involve you both trying to block an attack and turning it into a strike. Hey, right. Hey, right. Hey, Ragan, what about an Evo stone for, for, for a trigger? I'm actually thinking no trigger, but have the pose be like lounging on a bed or sofa or something like that. Hmm. That sounds, that sounds nice. Uh, well, I guess we can come back to the repose when we actually... Yeah, the, re the repose is a little bit secondary right now. Yeah. Are you repose your... Adjust my mannequin. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So, the only other one would be strike. Yep. Which, you know... I'm happy with the wording as it is. Uh, obviously. Oh, we do have. Yeah. Yeah. We it need to put it in the updated, yeah. but. Well, we were also talking about having it instead of dealing damage, uh, like just do the uh, the priming strike thing of like inducing double hit stun on like integrity. Well, it'll still do damage. It'll just also have that. Okay. Also, you may have noticed, but I went ahead and made Sprint uh, a subtitle, because it kind of ties into movement. Yeah, I did. I, I figured that it'd be rolled in eventually, but it was fine for now, so I didn't mind. Yeah. Alright, so strike I just wrote in as below, needs updated wording, upgrades like moves but at 1.5 times XP cost, causes double hit stun penalty. Causes double hit stun penalty, uh, do we want it to just be on accuracy, do we want it to just be on uh, integrity, or do we want it to be both? Uh, I'm, I figured it would work just like it, the hit stun actually works. If yeah, you make no, it... Just, yeah. If you make it through the accuracy check, then, you know, they get the hits done for accuracy. If you make it through the power, you know, through the integrity, then it'll also impact integrity. Yep. So it can affect both. It'll just be the same. Yep. I just didn't know who wanted to restrict it or not. All yeah. Right. Works for me. It's a low power strike. By default, anyways. Yeah, it's a it's a priming strike. Yeah, it's low power, but does decent damage. Not damn, but it allows you to do a or, really good follow up. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Okay, well, I think that's all of our maneuvers, unless we want to add a new one. Uh, can anyone think of another maneuver we need or could use? Mm, not at this very moment. I know one. Rygon cute. Right. Mm -hmm. This is very true. Very good maneuver. Yes. Yes. You you use an action to call Rygon cute. <laughs> Uses all the actions. Full round action. In a full round action. <laughs> Takes a full five seconds to call me cute. 
Well, I mean, we gotta do it like this. Right gun cue, right gun cue, right gun cue, right gun cue, right gun cue. Right gun cue. Critical damage. <laughs> also, Zim cute. What's up, Ball Pal? Zim adorable. You just keep saying my name. What's up? Uh <laughs> Okay, then. <laughs> All right. I am sending you the details, Zim. All righty. Then we'll figure out what we're going to move on to working on next. Well, we could always start discussing uh, the, uh, the next thing that was on our list, which was condition uh, status effects and conditions. Okay, well, let me go ahead and take care of this with Rygon, and we'll get right to that. I am also messaging Mirai real quick, so. Sure. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I think this creature would probably look excellent in uh, Mirai style. Probably mm. would. Then again, everything looks great in Mirai style, so I mean, this is, is true. true. Yeah. Well, Whiskers has some, a fantastic and sub point, style, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. At some point, though, um, if she ever becomes available, maybe that's what I'll do, is I'll grab one of these from her. Mm -hmm. Uh, They... They, that's right. Also, that head pad emote is looking adorable, Whiskers. It absolutely is. Today has been a first waiting day. But now, time to relax and get good art. Yes. Yes. Relaxation, Rygon. Relaxation, Rygon. <laughs> Rice stress gone. I got some soda. I got a flatbread pizza, which is okay. Ooh, yummy. Yeah. I got it's from like Panera. Plus, I tried out their like super caffeine drink. And combined with my stimulant, I'm like, oh, I can't think anymore. There's too much buzz in my head. <laughs> I see. So I spent like a whole hour just recovering from the drink.
needless to say, I'll probably only order that drink if I really need to pick me up. <laughs> Fair enough. Do those details work, sir? Uh, I was writing to <laughs> me, right? Sorry, let me check those. Yes. Also, I think it, I think it was really funny how, like, you know, you. Like uh, if you did like last week when you're like, oh yeah, by the way, I need uh, I need the art thing from you, and I'm like, what do you mean? I sent that to you a week and a half ago. Cat, <laughs> <laughs> cat, the zim. Oh, the pads. <laughs> nice book. Too bad it was all plagiarized from the dictionary, though. I replied to you, Ragon. Okay, cool. That works good. Perfect. Let me send the invoice. Then I'll get back to Mirai. I'm just feeling a little teasy tonight. That Let's is a okay. Teasy is good. Yeah. Uh, it is. I will admit, though, it is rather nice being able to afford TF art again. Uh, how I missed it while I was gone for a while. Yeah, I can imagine. Your invoice has been sent. And hello, Era. <laughs> Hey, Era. Hey, Era. Eric, you. You missed me yelling a lot. Yes. You could have been here listening to me yell. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that, that, that is something that did happen. No, you're fine, Era. Where is... There it is. Invoice. Uh, it was over me arguing with Rin over uh, the bulk system. Yeah. I have... Wow, Zim, apparently I've paid you 15 times in the last year. Which is really crazy considering it's only been one month. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> bulk. The, uh, like, carry weight. Yeah, there was about to be like gladiatorial combat. You, you were you were also going against Carceris as well, though. Oh no, I was explaining it to Carceris. Carceris was agreeing with me once he understood things. Mm -hmm. And Whiskers has switched back to the bulk bird. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Payment with so. nine grenades and picking up a single book. I need. I. I. I need. I need that gift. 
So for these little silly gifts, I'm actually planning to put them in as shorts on YouTube. Ooh. Um, which means that, uh, you guys doing those clips would actually be very helpful because then I can pull the audio from the clip while just having this GIF on the screen. Ah, that is helpful. I wonder what Rex is doing. Oh, I could list off a series of puns, but I don't know. That sounds absolutely silly. I'll be, I'd, I'd be down for that. I don't know if, uh, if everybody else would. No. Yep. Also, uh, Era, I did, and I think I get what you were saying on it. <laughs> what am I getting this week? Arriving tomorrow, chicken tikka masala, what? Barbecue chicken thighs with a beet potato salad? I don't think I've ever had a beet potato salad. It's pink. Is it supposed to be pink? Oh, no. What if it turns me pink? <gasps> Shit, I'm already pink. What if they've gotten me already? <laughs> Chickpea and cauliflower. What is that? Curry. Chickpea and cauliflower curry. I'm not sure how I feel about that one. I probably should have taken a closer look before it ordered this for me. Probably. <laughs> but we, it's okay. We've got like three spaghetti dishes in there. So. Mm, three I, I'll, be, I'll be good. Three spaghetti. Also, uh, Zim, apparently yes. PayPal's been keeping track of how much I've, how much I've been paying to like certain people and then like in like an email, they're like, oh, you paid this much to people. And I'm like, no, I don't want to see that. Take that away. I don't <laughs> want to see oh, how much I've been right paying on. people. <laughs> it will make me cry. Because <laughs> I looked I looked at like the first one. It was like 3000 I'm like, nope. <laughs> We're putting that off to the side. That's the Rygon. That was to that one was like to a subscription though, like something that's been on forever. I see. You've given Zim five hundred dollars. I'd be like, that's it? So. Pl please tell us if the following transactions are for illicit items. <laughs> <laughs> um, slight pivot. Mm -hmm. What do we want to call people in our setting that can move between the realities? Jackasses. <laughs> okay fine siri serious geez. thing let's let's think let's think about it we um, obviously can't call them planeswalkers yeah but... can't call them planeswalkers we're gonna call them reality Dim wanderers dimension dashers <laughs> no no let's let's see let's see if we can stretch this down into one single word mm. so like hopper for example but something cooler than that. Plane walkers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> plane walkers. Like, plane walkers is one word, at least according to them, anyway. <laughs> reality rippers. Rip their way from one reality to another. How, how do they? How do they get to the different realities? Then, is it like a phase? Do they open a portal? What do they do? Like canonically. Ah, uh, I haven't actually decided that yet. But I kind of like I the idea of a portal. Then how about the doorman? You know, I kind of like that. 
Mm -hmm. What about the gate man? <laughs> <laughs> well, then that, uh, there's, um, what is it? So, there's, uh, already Stargate, and a lot of times that's just called Gate. So I'm a little bit. There's also that's the Gate novel series. Yeah, but who reads books like, anymore? But that's like a anything. that's like a light novel series or something. But yeah, yeah. Um, the reason why I suggest Dorman is because it sounds kind of mysterious. It's something that could be easily slipped into language without like people necessarily realizing it right away. You know, if they're not familiar with the, with how the whole thing goes, it's obviously indicative of the, what they do. And I've not heard of anything else that has that same name. So that's why I suggested it. I, I am a little wary of the man part just because, you know, one, most of these uh, are creatures, you know, animal critter yeah. things. Um, Could call them door so openers. Well, we want to get it down to one word. So I was like playing with a couple different things what in about, my mind. What about and conduits? One thing that I thought of was because uh, I know, like, uh, I was like thinking about like in different settings, and I was thinking, oh yeah, dungeoneers are a thing. What if it's just dimensioneer? Dimensioneer, actually, I like it. I like you know, pioneer, dungeoneer, dimensioneer. Go ahead, Jim. I kind of like that. Okay. I was I was gonna I was gonna offer the the something with the word conduit because that's another word for passageway. We call those electricians. <laughs> <laughs> we call those sparkies. Fuck sparkies. <laughs> God he was a broom. Dungeoneers or what what did you say they were, Daltarius? Dimensioneer. 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 Okay. So yeah, I don't like think I've ever heard of it. anything that's I don't think I don't think I've ever heard of any setting that uses that word. I like that actually. It sounds but it pretty does, cool. It definitely does evoke an idea of like high sci-fi though. So kind of something to consider before settling on it. Mm -hmm. Like at least to me, when I'm when I think of like dimensioneer, it makes me think of things like uh, steamships or electric portals or um, what do you call it? Like space pirates. Like, I, mean, I don't know, it, it just makes me think more technology as opposed to a mix of magic and technology. I mean, I can see, I, I mean, I can see what you're saying, but what you might call it for fantasy, usually what they call a different dimension, they call, they, they call them the planes. And well, we're already, we're already trying to not say planeswalkers, so. Well, I will say it's also every other like even though they are they, they are going to be referred to as realities all ah. of these are going to be different realities um what about real shifters then i mean and there's also like like suppose that they go to a new reality, right? And they take on a new form. You could always go with a basic like Skinwalker, for example. But Skinwalker is already something else. Well, that's just it though. It is a generic enough name though that like no one franchise can just like claim it. That is but true. At the same but... time, it would still be indicative of like, oh, hey, when they go to different realities, they take on new forms. So, well, the that's thing if is that's a that... thing though. That is true, the, the, the but... thing that I'm thinking of when it comes to that, though, is that, like, it's not the problem about the IP of it. It's also about the connotation that the word has. Yeah, and the, and the, and the word skin, Skinwalkers kind of has that connotation of something stealing somebody else's form. Because that's, a, a, because that's already a thing. <laughs> oh, it would be just kind of up to the storyteller or writer or whoever it is then in order to put it into the right connotation. They also don't always shift form when they go to a different place. So yeah. then that right there, we can just cross that one off since that's they don't shift forms. Uh, spooky, if you're 
uh, if you're putting something like that, um, Dem like that sound, that's gonna make people think of Demir, which is something from Ravnica. Yeah. Yeah, we can't we can't take anything because goodness knows this little project does not need to get its little ass sued. Honestly, yeah. I that's also Honestly, why I want to avoid using Walker. Yeah, that's why, like, the first thing I suggested was Reality Shifter, but, eh. A real, or, or maybe, um, like, truncate it down to, re to Real Shifter. But I think, honestly, I, I honestly, I, I, I rather like Dimensioneer. I like Dimensioneer, too, but, like, I don't know, Dorman is also kind of working for me as well. <laughs> um... I like said, the like, mystery. Let's just say each reality. Yeah, what's to say each reality doesn't have its own name for those? True. Go ahead, Zim. Yeah, that is definitely a valid thing. Um, I'm just saying that uh, I want an official term that would generally yeah. be used. Yeah, like different, like different worlds, different co different cultures within the worlds probably have different names for things that are common. Yeah, this but is this is a, yeah, but having an official is... term that we call that we. Uh, us, the audience, call it. It's it's a good idea. Sorry, sorry if I interrupted. Sorry, I got interrupted. Uh, th it's the difference between an exo name and an endo name. Exo name and endo name. What are what are those? Oh, okay. So an exo name is the external name for something. Meanwhile, an endo name is the internal name for something. So the difference between it is like um, an exo name and an endo name is like for a city, there's a difference between what people in that city might refer to it as versus what someone else would refer to it as. Um, you can think of it in terms of like from the outside in or the inside out. Well, for example, you come across a, a guard, right? And you're like, oh, that's a security guard. But to mm -hmm. his peers, like to the people he worked with, he's just Paul. Ah, uh, yeah, I get it. Or get it, it might be or it might be something where like there could be different names for something. Yeah. So for example, uh like there might there's like a subsect of the city where I live called Over the Rhine or OTR, and that's what the locals call it, but, like, externally, like, people probably wouldn't call it that. I yeah, am that wanting I... a term that they would call themselves. Honestly, you mentioned that portals, right? Yes. Let's refocus back on that. Instead of, like, saying hoppers or jumpers or walkers or anything like that, let's refocus back on portal as our anchor. I really because that's like... that's the one thing that's synonymous with all of them. I really like the idea of the doorman. Um, my only concern is, well, I kind of wanted more gender neutral as well as it is already, men. It is already, it is already gender neutral. The war, the, the war man just, meet, the, Can the I war man just, meet, oh, sorry. As well as it kind of infers human. Well, in that case, we could swap it to something like doorkeeper, door sentinel. Yeah, but that that brings the connotation of like that they're guards, then not yeah. Well, then like maybe doorkeepers. A lot of them would be. I, I kind of like doorkeeper. Well, that, that feels like so eighties though. You could always call them key holders. What's a, what's the problem? What's the problem with the eighties? It's old. Ah. Uh. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter because whatever name we use but, in a couple of years is going to be outdated anyway. Like, well, yeah, what, what is wise. a jangle of keys called? Well, a, a bunch of keys is called, it goes on like a key ring. Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering if there's like a name for like a group of keys. And yes, Beerus, we've got an era here. Yeah. Uh, uh, normally, they're just called like a set of keys, a ring of keys, like other things like that. I know there's They're also current. called, like, a bundle, I think? Bundle. Bundle and bunch, They're, I think those are other names that are used for keys. Can, can, can you all guess what, what officially what a group of keys is called? Oh, there's an uh, official name for it? Apparently. 
Ah, I have no idea. I think it's one of the ones I said. I know they're all. They're they're called a bunch. That's it. <laughs> <You're> just... <laughs> Pretty boring. Fair enough. And I, don't, I don't think I don't think calling calling our guys like bunch keepers is really gonna fly. Yeah, so. I think I think maybe doorkeeper is the best way to. Bunch doorkeeper, keeper. I think, can be a the good working one. Door, <laughs> doorkeeper, I think, can be a good working one. But I I feel like we can improve on it just a little bit more if we think. The, about the it. thing that I want to keep away from, like you know, like key holder and things like that, is uh, this is like portals so you don't exactly need a key for a portal it's just more like a colloquial door I mean, it's not a literal door what about I mean, what about the knockers like knockers uh no like door like door knockers yeah no we're not gonna do that one that's yeah, that's no. playing for 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 breasts so i mean uh, that's, fine i mean i mean technically i mean technically unless those portals are i mean, mean uh, i mean unless Technically, unless those portals are like always open, like the ability to open the portal itself could be a key, could be considered a key. So, I mean, Rygon, if you're gonna go with that, then I would suggest uh, the knobs. Also, no. And Moving that is on. Definitely not. Gonna be... <laughs> yeah. mm. I, I still <laughs> think that like. You yeah, know, doorkeeper or something of that nature is probably the best. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like I said, I think it's a good working name, but I'll think a little bit more, see what I can come up with. Oh. Dimension jumpers. What about what about combining what about combining the? I the think first? dimension jumpers has been suggested double digits amount of times by now. Yeah. What up? What about combining the word for the the words key and keeper and calling them the keepers? <laughs> yeah. No, that's. Yeah, no, that sounds silly. Well, I mean, considering that uh, Taldarius was exceedingly against, uh, vehemently against the uh, calling our currency Scarpies. Um... Yes, it's Scarp bad. Scarpies, Scarpies sounds like a disease. Yes, that was exactly <laughs> what I said. <laughs> well, your biggest issue with it was the fact that it was uh, too gimmicky. Oh yeah, it was gimmicky, and I hate gimmicks. But also, yes, it does. I did say at one point that it sounds like we're giving our players a disease. <laughs> Call them the travelers, because they travel between realities. I mean, that can work, but isn't that a little a little bit too generic? I think we yeah, that's why we're avoiding things like that of like just jumpers. Call them the tourists, travelers, like all that. We we're trying not to. <laughs> so again, tourist. I still Ooh. think that doorkeepers are best one because Raijin we... has suggested porter Ooh. Uh, a porter is a job yes and and Dorman isn't what is that what is what is a porter a uh, porter is someone a... who carries luggage and other things of that nature I uh, actually no a ah. uh, porter is somebody that's stationed at a door or gate to admit or assist those entering no, a porter is a job. It is someone who carries lugger, luggage and other things like that. Uh, it, it, it was actually like a really old job where someone, if they were a porter, they would carry things to and from different locations in the city on hire. Okay, it's there's both. multiple. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, I see. Interesting. The first definition is a person stationed at a door or gate to admit those or to admit or assist those entering. Uh, I then, do like... I do like it. I feel though that that might be taken somewhere, so we should probably do a cursory search and make sure. Noted. I'll just say fantasy novel. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. Uh, it, it was also like an old job that would like take things to and fro. Um, like for example, someone who moved around like wine barrels and all that would be called a porter. Cool. So, like, if you were going to get, um, like, a, a keg of beer from storage to bring it to the, uh, to bring it to the tavern or whatever, you'd have a porter do that. They would transport the item. That's why they were called porters. Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing well, anything here of, like, that name being used um, within any, like, novels. It's mostly just giving me, like, 
uh, our author's last name, like their last name's Porter sort of thing. I'm not seeing it as being a distinct. Uh, Spooky was bringing up Death Stranding, so. I don't. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, uh, but like, eh. But the thing is, they can't, you can't, you can't copyright just a job's name. Yeah. I mean, I'm against it anyway, because it has, like, the connotation of it, you carrying goods and services between locations. I, I, I like it because most people aren't going to know it as that. They're going to know it like, oh, that sounds like Portal Porter. I am actually really liking it because, I mean, they're not supposed to, they're not necessarily going to be like... For us, I'm thinking that they can open portals and uh, allow others to move between the realities with them. Unlike, you know, planeswalkers, where you can't actually take people with you. Um, so having a porter, I, I kind of like that term. And it does rather I invoke the uh, portal aspect. Hmm... Uh... Yeah, I mean, I, I disagree, but that's just on a personal. That's fair. I, I think I, I, you, think I do see where Sim, where Sim is coming from. I you, think I'm liking that, actually. You, you also I'm, disagree a lot with navigation. Well, yeah, but that was just because of the name. I didn't like it. But I did say that that was the best thing that we had. I don't like the thing of Porter because, again, all I can think of it is that, okay, this is someone who brings goods back and forth, not travels dimensions. Well, I think it's all just going to come up to how it's presented. Like in the in the book itself, if we're talking about it, about it within the connotation of these are people who travel, who keep portals, stuff like that, that'll be what the reader associates them with. I mean, maybe, but all I associate it with is they're bringing goods back and forth. Well, yes, but that's always a personal thing. Um, yeah, that's why I me, said that I disagree with it personally. That that was my thing this entire time. Yeah. For me, I was thinking, you know, a doorman, except much more neutral. Uh, you know, porter. Plus, it invokes the portal aspect. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you say so. <laughs> and plus, I mean, if it comes to like, if we like door doorman so much or doorman. We could just maybe just spell it slightly different and get rid of that like men at the end of it. Well, that's why that's why we're talking about doorkeeper. The, the doorkin. Well, how about I mean like we we could literally go like doormin. D o d o o r m i n, and that gets rid of that whole business at the end of it. I think that'll get called out basically instantly. Yeah, but what doesn't these days? What call out calls out for what? Oh, no, so we are not doing a, door dashers. It will get called out basically instantly for just slightly changing the spelling of a common word for it to be more, you know. And is there something wrong with that exactly? Yeah, that tends to piss people off. Oh, oh. They can be pissed off of. I'm, I mean, bad, people, yeah. people literally get pissed off at like, I don't know, Barbie. Okay, uh, we've got, I think we've got three good suggestions. We've got Porter, Doorkeeper, and Doorman. Uh, we're just going to run a poll, I think. Mm, okay. All right. It's not like a bad idea. Good thing, Yara. All right, so are we going to do the thing where we actually go over the mechanics of uh, the statuses, or...? I mean, we are still working on the SCAR system, because this is an important decision on that. This but... is literally flavor text. Delicious flavor. The poll, the poll is live. Uh, yeah, please go refrain. vote, everybody. 
I, I will refrain from voting since I put one in. Also, it looks like you're being drawn, Rygon. Yay. Ooh. Ooh. Is a cutie. Yeah. Oh, Zim, you should you should show stream the the picture I sent you. I think they will all agree that it is adorbs. I mean, yes, oh. but I don't own the rights to that. Well, but I do. do. Do you own commercial rights? I mean, I bought it. But that doesn't necessarily so... mean you own commercial rights to the art. Uh, no. Okay. So with how um, copyright I know, works, I know how it works. Commissioners get full, basically because he commissioned it, he has full copyright over it. Not always. Yeah, I do, but I'm not going to make the yeah. argument. Well, te technically, it depends. Not always. Mm -hmm. No, literally, literally in in the buying of the art or the like description itself, I it says I can do whatever the hell I want with it. But. Oh, okay, yeah, but I'm just saying, like, just because you buy art from someone, it does not mean that you technically own the copyright to the art. Yeah, no, I, I'm aware. In this case, I do, but I'm like I said, I'm not going to make the argument because, well, I just don't feel like it. Well, look at it. Is it? It's this. Zim doesn't want it on the stream. It's not going. Yeah, on it's the his stream. stream. Y'all. It's okay. Hey, Arrow. Oh, boy. Now, when it comes to booping like the Zim snoot, we, we don't need permission. We just do it because he's cute. Order. I feel like I've heard that name in a fantasy novel somewhere. Oh, you probably have. Like, it is an old what? job. It is, a, it is a literal job, so you probably heard it. No, yes. no, no. I mean, like, using a grander context than just job. What, what was that one fantasy series, and I'm I'm sorry for being a little crude, but this is literally how it is, where the dwarves eat dirt, and then they, like, you know, expel it out from Oh, behind. you mean uh, Artemis Fowl? Oh, yeah, I, I feel love like that, that series. I feel like that might be where I'm hearing Porter's from. Let me look it up. Artemis I Fowl... Alright, 60% of the votes is for Porters. Okay. I think I remember reading one of the books about Artemis Fowl, but I don't remember any mention of Porters. It may have been one of the later books. Oh, here, here it is. Artemis it... Fowl, The Arctic Incident. Oh, the second book. Nice. Yeah. Can I search it, please? Thank you. There is the word porter in it, but it's not like big. It just says like one porter had spotted the flying patient, but he was he had been successfully mind wiped. Also, wow. reading reading through this book, it's very how best to say it hand wavy with its details. It no, it's be. like it's like Artemis was heading back to St. Bartleby's. This is where he had to be when the Helsinki Medical Services identified his father from the suitably weathered passport Fowley had run up for him. Like, you know, it's very it's very like it doesn't get down into into the details. It's just like, oh, we're we're keeping it very broad. Oh, it's because they go into detail in a lot of other places, just not in those kinds of situations. Yeah. I remember when I read that series, they had these quote unquote secret codes across the bottom of every page. And if you completed it, or if you figured it out and sent in a letter, you'd be able to get into the movie or TV show. Mm -hmm. And then that never actually happened. Of course not. <laughs> I'm like not I, surprised. There is one coming out, and it, it either just came out or is coming out soon. But this is also, you know, twenty years past when that book, when that whole thing was released. <laughs> that is really uh, that, yeah. Uh, I guess you know you could use porters if you want. I'm, I'm not gonna use it, but I'll just be nondescript. 
That's fair, Tal. Because I literally cannot think of it in a way that is not me just thinking about someone moving goods back and forth. <laughs> That's right fine. Now. I would I would just assume just so long as it's, you know, well, yeah. mentioned in the places appropriately. Yeah, I was about to say, like, I just won't, you know. I just won't involve myself with it, and then it'll all be fine. Everything will be fine. Because seriously, like, I, I've been trying, I cannot think of it in anything other than, oh, hey, someone moving goods back and forth. <laughs> I mean... I think I, I think I think I think we we will have the same issue with if if we if we went with Dorman. Well, yeah, but I didn't want to go with Dorman either. So fair. Okay, fair enough. Well, I'd say this uh, particular topic has been like beaten to death. What's next? Uh, next, which was also what was supposed to be doing previously, is going over status effects and conditions. Cool. Oh. Blanks out. Okay. What's up, Zoom? Uh, I was just finishing up messaging uh, Mirai. How are they doing? I've not seen them in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Mirai... Also, spooky. Oh, God. Mirai has been dealing with some IRL stuff, and the. Hey. Uh, nothing too terrible. They've just been some concerning stuff uh, for themselves. Um, That's fair. Obviously, been... I won't pry into it, but yeah. like, I mean, I am worried. They've been all right. Uh, I will also say that they've been wanting to work on more larger projects this year, as opposed to a bunch of smaller ones. Okay. That's fair enough. Needs more gear you... character hears. Yeah. Also, are you spooky? Oh, Go ahead. Just are you, are you thinking of like having having them do larger projects, or are they just kind of doing independent stuff? Uh yes. They will or... do larger projects at some point. Like independently, or with you? With me. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, Tolerius. Yeah. Spooky. A porter is not a merchant. It is someone, it is literally like a laborer gopher that goes back and forth and is moving goods. It's not like a merchant, like bringing things from far and wide. It's someone you tell to go fetch the, the, the spare ale barrel from the, from, you know, the brewery. That is. Well, I definitely don't disagree. Modern connotation could change that. Who here agrees with me that now porters are merchants? And if all of you say I, then yeah, they are. I, I can't, I, I can't, I can't agree with, I can't agree with, 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 with I can't agree with that. Moving yeah, past just... that, the it is one definition of porter. Now, is there a type of alcohol called porter? Yes, there is. But that's an item, which is different. Yeah. Let's... But like, see, yeah, seriously, we, we have beaten this down yeah. to death. I would very much like to talk about something else. Yeah, I was yeah. just saying, because, yeah. you know, chat was continuing to talk to me specifically about it. <laughs> the next thing I would like to work on real quick is what maneuvers will trigger an attack of opportunity. Well, I am, if we... Go ahead. I am thinking... Obviously, the defensive maneuvers will not. Uh, the assist maneuver, I think, will depend on what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, if it's a shout, that won't do much. But if it's, like, like an actively, I'm going to help, it will. Like, the thing is, is that, like, the only one that I could think of that, like, on maneuvers that would actually like guaranteed do it is just movement okay well is there any movement that is like not 
or that that is like considered movement like for example in in some other in some other games there's something like say the five foot step back which would we not have trigger an step. attack of opportunity yeah we do which have is, that yeah which specifies that it doesn't provoke an attack of opportunity yeah. okay so you guys have already done that yeah okay okay that was just something i wanted to go over real quick make sure there wasn't anything else we wanted to include is there like a an aiming action nope no okay then never mind because i think you know you could interrupt them if they're like aiming at somebody else no so what happens is is that if you use a ranged attack in melee that provokes it we're just talking about maneuvers okay. yeah all right, insert page break. This will be that normal text. Let me write in a little introduction to the chapter real quick. That is adorable. Yay. Man. I would totally boop that snoot ring on. Yeah, I'll have you actually seen the picture? Like the feral form? No. Oh, let me get it for you then. It's very cute. It's absolutely adorable. Yeah. It is. I very saw cute. it, I'm like I, I saw it, I'm like, I have to add this to my rotation of sonas. <laughs> rotation of sonas, that it, that that is such an awesome phrase. And that's it. Okay. Paste. Got that there you go. Walt. Set up. Now to make this columned and probably break things, because that's how Google Docs is. Oh, wow. That didn't get broken. Sus. What do you think, Alt? Well, those are cute. That also did yeah, not get are. broken. I am more sus. Very sus. <laughs> It's sad when things that uh, things not breaking is causing me worry. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea how many times I have to, had to fight with this stupid document over formatting. Bad, bad. Who gives the zim pugs? <laughs> I mean. We can break it if you want. No! Yes. I could definitely break things. Yeah. I choose chaos. Well we'll we'll do whatever we'll do whatever makes you more comfortable. Gang, get the sledgehammers. <laughs> so oh, dang, oh, oh, what was that? Oh, 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 okay. Um I got a I got a thing. I got a I got a thing. Um yeah. Come um oh oh um yeah. I got a thing to do over yeah, I got a got a thing. Me? Okay, are we actually going to go over the conditions? Yes! Okay, because we are supposed to, like, start going over it, like, over an hour ago, so... Let me All right, so we'll it. start out with the battle status effects, because, you know, might as well just go section by section. Okay. So, the first up is Berserk. This effect causes the target to go into a blind rage attacking the nearest target regardless of friend or foe. When multiple potential targets are nearby, they are rolled between randomly. Suffering damage while under the effects of Berserk causes the next roll to resist to be at a plus one difficulty. The afflicted will move to attack only utilizing the strike maneuver.
All right, so what do we think about that just in general already? I think that is good as is. All right. The one thing that I'm thinking of is the only utilizing the strike maneuver. Because, again, the strike maneuver does almost no damage. Strike maneuver? Don't you mean friendly tickle? So the reason why I was thinking it would use the strike maneuver is because the whole idea is blind rage. Um, they're not necessarily thinking about weaponry. They're not thinking about moves. They're just... They are, they are just lashing out. I get it. Ah, fair. Door, door dash, what the hell was that advertisement? What, what happened? It, it had two flowers getting it on. Ah, nice. nice. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to mention more of it. It was disgusting. I see. And I do things. It is not a PAL world um, creature. It's a it's a hybrid of a Pokemon and a PAL world. Um, yeah, it's a PAL. it's a it's a Chilion. Chilion and Umbreon. Like, is like one color the shiny and the other one a regular? No, they're both regular. Yeah. I'm actually getting the shiny version separate. Is one of them Gorill and not Gorill? Uh, I don't know. Yes, Demon. Exactly. Like Squirrel was with the doctors. That is a great way to describe the, the berserk condition. Also, should we rename this to just conditions? I kind of feel like we should. Distances I mean... us more from Pokemon and... Yeah, we could say conditions. Yeah. And it's more standard across, you know, tabletop games. That's fair. Alright, uh, I guess I'll, on the stat sheet, on the character sheet, instead of status effects, uh, should I just say conditions? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, it has been updated. I mean... Are, are we... Yeah, these are only negatives, right? Not necessarily. Ah, okay. I was I'm... just going to say because if there were only negatives, I would call the ailments, but if we're going to include positives here, then yeah, condition sounds good. I want to, like, I don't have plans for any uh, positives right now. Uh, but I don't want to limit us to having this be only detrimental. Okay, know? yeah, that's not, that sounds good. But also, it's, you know, more standardized across tabletop games that these are referred to as conditions. I get it. Sounds good. Is it in the same connotation, though? What do you mean? Like, it... All, all that standardization across all the other systems, I'm sure it means one thing for them doesn't mean the same thing here. Yes. Okay. Like, I just, I, I'm just asking, not because I'm sure it wasn't, but just in case it wasn't, that could cause player confusion. Yeah, these are, you know, frightened, uh, berserk, uh, blinded, bound, or restrained. Okay. Yeah, th those yeah. are all standard conditions across a lot of uh, tape. It just kind of goes by the name, so it doesn't really... Yeah. A lot of it is self-explanatory. We just have a lot more of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. So, any changes to the Berserk condition? Um, I think that Berserk is probably fine. Yeah, okay. I think it's good. I will just copy paste that up here. I did not want it to have that. Hmm. I'm starting. I think I'm thinking of that Herculean tale where Hercules was made to go berserk by Hera. I think I remember oh, that one. Oh, uh, just just thought of something. 
Uh, yeah. Maybe we should have them use the strike maneuver at a fury. I like that. So it'll have Do the we... strike, but it'll ha they'll have the fury keyword on their strike. Will the strike be, like, buffed in any one which way? No. Okay. We don't want this to necessarily be punishing to other players, you know? It'll be punishing enough because strike uh, causes double hit stun. So if you get... If someone is berserk and going after you and is able to, like, rip into you, your defenses are probably going to be zero. Because okay. it's going to be... It's very hard to dodge and get someone off of you if they're going completely berserk. Yeah. I mean, that that's just what I'm thinking, because, like, usually with, with berserk, it's like, okay, so obviously they're uncontrolled, their defenses tend to be lowered, but it usually comes with some sort of at least small buff in some way, or at the very least, it's detrimental to whoever the berserker is targeting. Yeah, that's why it's this... That's why the strike maneuver is getting the fury trait, which allows them to attack multiple times easier. Perfect. That works. Yeah. All right. Next up is blinded. I think we'll just make it just blind. Yeah. This effect causes the target to miss their attacks more often. Before attempting an accuracy check, the effect of the afflicted must roll percentile to see if they automatically miss or not. I know what we were going for with this. I feel like it's simpler to just say, oh, hey, just raise difficulty. I agree on that. Yeah. Is there, and I know this, I know this is a silly question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Is there any, like, say, status or buff for an individual who knows, like, say, a series of actions inside and out? Well, you can still do things. It just will reduce your accuracy. Which there's, like, a difference of. Okay, so... No, well, well, would be a good one. So, like, say, taking apart and putting together a gun wouldn't be affected, but taking a shot would. Yeah. Okay. Of course, there might be narrative detriments to you not being able to see, but mechanically, it affects evasion. Uh, this okay. is a battle status effect anyway, so this they're, like, supposed to dissipate after battle. And by yeah, after battle, we mean, really like, the scene that they're used in. Ooh. Is there is there a combat condition for like say um uh testing, temporary testing. hearing loss? How do you hear you or how are you? Oh, there we go. Sorry, my headphones died. Yeah, we don't have deafened and silenced, but uh we're thinking about putting those in. Yeah, I mean silence I I, I can get if that one doesn't go in, but deafened yeah. I feel is still like widespread enough that one could. And Silent. it could just literally be something like can't hear teammates sort of thing. Silenced would be an, um, uh, an important one to include, especially because eventually we will add magic. While the magic system itself is going to be a... Uh, the magic system itself is going to be an optional system, mm -hmm. but we still should have things built into the system that would impact that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's it is... It is already a bit impactful because if you silence someone, then they can't communicate. Is silenced as a word in that connotation copyrighted by any chance? No. No. No, it's okay. used like in so many different things. Okay, just checking. Like, even if you're worried about it be even if you're worried about it like from like one perspective, like just think about the fact that like both League and Dota use Silenced. Yeah, okay. I've, heard, I've heard it being used in a lot of RPGs. If they don't use Silence, if they don't use Silence, they use something like Seal. Yeah, which is what I was saying. Like, we could make Sealed be auditory and, like, both, like, 
doing anything auditory and hearing anything auditory. Hmm. That's what I that's what I suggested like or like earlier, but you know. Hmm. We should at least go through the ones that we actually have here now first, though. Yeah. 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 Um, going back to Berserk, because we should also consider uh, resisting these things. Yep. Um, for Berserk, do we want it to be a... Uh, it'll allow them to use the cleanse maneuver as a quick action? I feel like Berserk is something that should be checked at the beginning of the turn. Well, that's... For free. I, I'm saying, just to keep things standardized, have it still require the cleanse maneuver. But it allows the cleanse maneuver to be used as a quick action because their other actions are not up to them. Uh, sure. Okay. It requires that you use a quick action at the start of your turn to resist. Sounds good. Takes a shower. No longer mad. Makes sense. <laughs> Don't get mad. Get glad. I mean, showers do help a lot. They do. And what was that little thing that I actually came across? It was like, if you feel like everyone hates you, sleep. If you hate everyone, uh, like, take, take a shower. Like, take a bath. And if... God, what was that third one? I was like, if you don't feel like anything or whatever, it was like eat or something like that. Let me see if I can find it. <laughs> okay. You that, feel that, happy? Hello there, sleep, Minecraft. Tired? Yes. Sleep. We have more people that come in. Um, I'm thinking with that cleanse maneuver, they use it as a quick action. If successful in resisting this, it then Church. takes up a standard action. Sound but why? Why? Ah, eh, fair. We'll just leave it as is. Uh, yeah, like if they it. like, there's a reason that I said at the beginning of the turn. I feel like if they successfully do it, they should have their turn back. Ah, that's fair. Because it still I... requires that you use a defensive maneuver as a quick action, so you still have used your defensive maneuver for the turn. Fair enough. All right. So blind increases difficulty for Half. accuracy checks. Uh, do we want to keep this three stage? Yes. All right. All right. So probably increase by one per stage. Yes. I do found we... the meme. Okay. Nice. I'll quick. I'll just quickly say it. When you feel like everyone hates you, sleep. When you feel like you hate everyone, eat. When you feel like you hate yourself, shower. There you go. I see. And yes, they are legit. All right, Zim, go ahead. Um... I am kind of thinking, do we want to have every condition have the three stage? It could be difficult for some to come up. Uh, it, it could be difficult to come up with some of them for what their different stages would be. But I also like the idea of having it more standardized where everything has three stages. I we'll say we take I on would the say challenge and do three. What were you I'm... saying, Todd Arius? I wasn't saying anything. That was for horror. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. I was gonna say I'm not sure if that's uh, I'm not sure if that's a good idea. Personally, I personally like the standardization though. I say play it by ear. If we're having too much trouble, we can just drop the standardization. Try for yeah. three and always drop back. True. Yeah. That, I, I, this is this is all testing after all. Yeah. I mean, like, legitimately, like, it could just come down to, like, okay, we can't really think of anything for stage one. It could just be something as simple as, like, player assistant actions are, like, half effective, stuff like that. 
I mean, maybe. It's just, you know. Like, I guess we could, like, go into, like, other things. Like, what one good thing could be, like, if we do do three stage, like, on Berserk, it could give them, like... Maybe, like, stage one, they just attack. Stage two, they get fury. And stage three, like, you know, uh, they could possibly use moves. I like that. I wasn't sure about stage three for that, but I was thinking stage two is where they get fury. Yeah. So, like, stage three, they could probably make, like... I don't know about, like, all... Like, let's just keep it simple. Let's just say they can use moves. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, I'm gonna be off for a week. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shower before it gets too late. But I'll be back. After all, we That's got good. the game in a, little, in a little bit. Go Good cleanse day. yourself. Yeah. Normal. Stage two. Strike with fury. Stage three. Moves. What matters is that I understand this for rewriting later. Yep. All Sleep right. well, Beerus. Good night, good Roomba. And right now we're talking night, about uh, conditions, Minecraft. Okay, so that is those two finished. All right, so now next up we have Bound. I think we're going to rename that to Restrained. Yeah, that's fair. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let me just set that up. I mean, it's like it's like the difference between tying them up completely in rope and just putting a pair of handcuffs on them. Well, also because like you know they might be restrained in a different way, where like you know you could restrain someone with like gravity, for example. Yeah. Or coil around them. Yeah. Yeah, coils. Something, 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 long tail, something, something. Ooh. Something, something. Long necks. Oh, that's no. right. I, I am currently a fox sparks. Okay, so... Oh, right. We should probably also figure out what... Uh... Because I kind of like the idea of different skills being used for resisting each of these. Like for Berserk, we could have Insight be the one that you use to resist it. Blind could be Perception. Yeah. So what we could do is, like, on each of the things, we put Resist, colon, and then, like, a skill. Like, what skills would resist it generally? Yeah. Resist. So, inside sound good for Berserk? Yep. And blind, of course, perception. Mm-hmm. My eyes are too good. You cannot blind me. Ah, flashlight! So, restrain. Pockets and... Uh, dexterity feels like a natural one or whatever. It's like dexterity. We don't have dexterity. We already have athletics and acrobatics written down, though. Yeah. You could either try to, like, mm. physically break out of it, or you could try and, like, uh, like, you know, dexterously get out of it using acrobatics. I feel like acrobatics, then, because mostly it's, it feels like oh. a warming your way out of sort of thing. I was going to allow either one. Yeah, it was, it was either. Uh, bo oh, okay. Both would be applicable for this one. That is fair. Restricted on movement and other abilities... Stage one, I say just movement. Stage two restricts uh, moves and attacks. But what do we want for stage three? Life choices. No. Um, or do you have a different idea on this? So... That's fair on those two. For stage three... Yeah, 
It could include other maneuvers. Well, yeah, but I feel like that would happen in stage two as well. Uh, one thing that I was thinking of is if you're fully restrained, it also might turn off, uh, like, uh, like maybe intrinsic feats or whatever. I don't know if that would, I don't know if that's too good of an idea. It's just more something that I was thinking of. Um, well, I feel like with stage one, it's movement. Stage two is moves and weapons, you know, those kinds of attacks. Stage three, but at stage two, they can still use strike. Um, All right. Um, for stage three, we could uh, we could just do something simple and make it so that way it like increases the difficulty of getting out by one or two or something like that as like a capstone. I like that. We're getting tier three restrained. And it also disables, you know, strike. Yeah. All maneuvers. Because, like, at stage two, they could still use defensive maneuvers as well. Yeah. So, like, stage three, like, you could say, like, you know, can only attempt to resist and then, like, difficulty raised by, like, two. Basically showing you have been fully restrained 100%. No, Era, don't put away your guitar. I haven't gotten to hear you play it all tonight. Also, Zolit, no, exhaustion is a different mechanic. I'm going to head out for now. All right, okay. see you. Bye, everyone. You're all cuties. Especially Dead Zim, fellow. No. Mm -hmm. And I am putting in Disables Attacks because, um, by the rules, I'm not going to be considering Strike to be an attack uh, for things that it's affect just a attacks. Just Disable Attack actions. Yeah. So that way you can't use... So that way it like also includes like status effects, because that's considered like an offensive action. Fair. Alright, stage three... And only cleanse plus one. I'm going to say plus one difficulty. Because if they get to that point, I don't want to punish them too hard because they're clearly yeah, already fair. struggling. Fair. Especially because uh, doesn't it only like knock it down to the next stage? Yeah. So they just go back to number two. So yeah, what plus one difficulty is fine. Resist athletics or acrobatics. All right, so that is bound dealt with. Hmm. Mark that off. Next up would be charm. Uh, charm could be stage like just like in terms of like stages, just ideas for it. Like stage one won't attack chart like the user stage two won't attack the user or their allies stage three would assist the user in combat okay hold on <sighs> right now this effect renders the afflicted with the attract with an attraction to the user and their team the afflicted has a chance of being unable to use abilities and maneuvers during their turn this can be resisted each turn uh, right now, it's a 30% chance to, uh, which we're getting rid of the percent chances. Yeah. Um, so... Stage 1... If the afflicted takes damage, their next attempt to break free from the charm is at a minus one difficulty. I like that. Yep. Um, it is not a free action to roll. It is a deliberate one, Strato. Uh, we have a cleanse maneuver, which is an action, uh, which it allows you to do a little bit. I have returned. Side note, Zim, you don't Ryan need me playing guitar right now. It'd be a distraction. Subscribed for 17 months. Fair. Currently but I like work and I wanna see if I can Yeah, well, I was just flailing on my guitar tonight to get out some uh, stress. Fair. Yeah, it sounds like you had a stressful day. 
Work itself wasn't bad, it's just I felt like shit the entire time. Oh. oh. Then I ate chicken, and then, then it got worse. Well, it's okay. You get to hang out with Squirrel tonight, and that's always a plus, right? Well, considering I'm on my meds now, and I don't feel like shit, and I've rested, and I have uh, taken some stuff to make it so that way I don't feel like shit for the allergic reaction, I'm good. Was the chicken good? Yes. But it was BK chicken, so I'm not even sure it's real. Ah, fair. Brian, thank you very much for that resub and your 17 months of support. <laughs> Also, I mean, if it made you sick, then I think it is real chicken. Unless it's just a uh, placebo effect kind of, kind of situation. The Burger King chicken sandwich is weird because sometimes it makes me really sick. Sometimes it doesn't affect me at all. So it's a gamble. So I think maybe it's partially real. Nice, Rin. All right, so what do you think about my suggestion for charm? One moment, just bringing over some of these notes here. All right, what were your suggestions? Uh, stage one won't attack the user. So like the person charming them. Stage two won't attack the user or their allies. Stage three will assist the charmer. Sounds good to me. If damage is suffered from the user or their allies, the next Cleanse attempt is minus one diff. Stage one won't attack user. Stage two won't attack user's allies. Stage three actively assists the user. I like that. Oh, right. Uh, will not self harm. I am putting that in there. Yep. Now, what do we do for confusion? Well, first off, for charmed, uh, what do we want for resist on that? Yeah. Uh, might be another insight. Hmm. Uh, the one that's personality. Hold on. Presence? Presence? Yes, thank you. I feel and like presence is what would apply it. I feel like it could resist it, though. Yeah, fair. Or maybe it could... You know, I could see, like, presence or deception applying it, but... Uh, could do insight or presence to resist. Yeah, fair. Hmm. Yeah, I say I say insight or pro and and or presence. Um, the reason being, like insight, obviously you're seeing past whatever it is they're trying to do, and presence, you just have enough natural oomph to resist. Like, I see past like, your bullshit. Yeah. It's I, I see past your BS, or I have enough BS of my own. <laughs> I see through your your bullshit, or I I am bullshit. Yeah. Well, you can kind of think of it like this: it's like you know a world leader, right? Another world leader going up to them is probably not going to be cowed by them. Well, I think we're good on charmed. Yep. Confusion. So right now we have it set up as... Also, yes, Brian, you can join voice, but please don't distract too much from the, you know, dev work. 
Uh, right now, for confusion, the this effect causes the target to potentially harm themselves instead of performing their action. The effect persists until it is resisted. An afflicted target will only have one action per turn. Every turn, the confused will need to roll 1d10 in place of their action. On a 1 to 3, they will move in a random direction. On a 4 to 6, they will take 6d damage, uh, which I believe, yeah, that was 6 dots. 6 dots, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that cannot be resisted or lowered, though I think we will have it where integrity applies still. Yeah. Um, yeah. On a 7 to 10, they can take one action. Regardless of that roll, they will get to roll to resist as well. So, uh, I'm thinking that the way that we can, like, work this is that with stage one confusion, hmm, maybe, maybe you can, maybe with stage one, you can only take one action. Stage two, you'll move in a random direction and you can take one action. And then stage three, uh, we should probably let them still keep their one action, but uh, also they'll hurt themselves. How does that sound? I, uh... I feel like the chance to hurt themselves in their confusion should be present the entire way. Because, purely because that's what people will expect, because, you know, Pokemon. All right, um, skill 2, 4, 6. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It'll be a higher chance that they hurt themselves, and otherwise, I kind of like the way it's set up as is. You know, it's the, uh, instead of percentile, you know, it's a 1d10, but I kind of like that setup as is. It's a little bit more complex than the others, but, you know. It's confusion. It's confusion, yeah. exactly. It's fitting. So one action can only be used on cleanse. Uh, or one action per turn. Disables quick actions. Stage one. Roll 1d10. So essentially it'll be 20%, 40%, 60% for hurting themselves. Yes, no. Oh, you said that you you said you wanted there to be the damage the entire time. So I was saying that like, you know, there's always the possibility of dealing the damage, just have the amount of damage they roll scale. Two dot two two dice, four dice, six dice. I like that. That'll work. That'll make it simpler too. Yep. Also, because the dice amount is low and it isn't scaled to the character, we might still want to have it bypass integrity. Good point as well. Because, you know, it's just going to be a standard difficulty, so. Like, at, at most, like, obviously, like, it could technically roll, like, really high in, like, an extreme catastrophe, but you're probably going to lose, like, 
maybe three health with tier three going on you. I mean, there's always the possibility, considering, remember, that, like, seven dice roll I had that had, like, 13 successes on it, but... Yeah. There's always the possibility of disaster, but... Well, you know, that's kind of just how it rolls sometimes. If we really care, we could put a max cap on it. No, I like the idea of it being potentially as much. Potentially right. catastrophous, yeah. yeah. Catastrophic. We will say it cannot kill, though. Because there are rules for, you know... Self-damage cannot kill. Because there are rules for if you take enough damage, you will be just dead. But... Yeah. So just... I, I highly doubt that even at stage 3, they're going to be able to do enough for that. But there's always that chance of 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. <laughs> So yeah, uh, self damage cannot kill. We'll, we'll put that. It can knock out, but not kill. Um. It's alt shift five. Yeah, no, I accidentally made it uh too. Oh okay. Too deep of a green. That was my oops. Uh, what do we want for resisting? Insider presence again? Mm. Or which one? Confusion. Uh, confusion. Is there any wisdom ones? No, wisdom is baked into mind rolls. Hmm. I feel like perception, then, would probably be the best one. Like awareness of self and others. Hmm. I'm gonna throw a curveball. What about something like navigation or survival? I'm gonna say no to navigation, but I do like the idea of survival. Could have it inside or survival. Yeah, sure. All right, that's confusion finished. Also, hi there, Gib Gab. No, Thank we're you. not really doing math tonight. So the next one is distracted. Oh, they're just giving people ADHD now, huh? <laughs> Now, hello there. What's wrong with the man? Interesting name there. Another Thanks for the follow. All right. So next up oh, would be oh, distracted. Uh... Sorry, Rygon, I just saw you sent that. Uh, let me send that on to Whiskers. Hey, uh, Whiskers, we got a little bit of feedback here. That's that so far. Yeah, I, I'm liking how it's turning out. The, the comments I made are more just like me being stingy on the reference. No worries. Ooh, a blue pillow.
Alright, so for distracted right now... Uh, this effect causes the target to be distracted. They are unable to use combat maneuvers and have a 20% chance each turn to only have one action for that turn. Can be resisted with a bonus action each turn. Hmm. Uh, what if instead of that we say, uh, can only take defensive maneuvers? Uh, uh, unable to take maneuvers except for defensive maneuvers, and then after stage two, it turns into... Hmm. I know one of them will be, like, going down to only having one action a turn. Maybe losing quick action? Yeah, we could do stage two, the... Stage one, only... Uh, so stage one, they lose... Maneuvers that are not defensive maneuvers. Okay. Stage two, they... Or maybe that and movement, sorry. Defensive maneuvers and movement. So they can't do things like assist or strike. Yeah. Uh, stage two, they lose... We should also say they don't sprint, but yeah. Well, sprint is a sub yeah. maneuver. Yeah, but you know. Yeah. We could throw that in if we wanted to. Actually, I guess I... Let me go ahead and go up and adjust the movement, or the sprint one real fast. I'm just gonna put in here this particular maneuver is a sub maneuver and thus does not have its own upgrades. There we go. That sound good? Under Sprint, this particular maneuver is a sub-maneuver and thus does not have its own upgrades, as upgrades to the movement maneuver also impact this one. Yep. I think Whiskers is in the zone. Whiskers! Whiskers! Check your messages! I am back. Hey, Robert. Welcome back. back. Thank you. Welcome but back. You are back. No big surprise. Not a big surprise. All right. <laughs> um, but so, how do we feel about the whole like you know, lose access to certain maneuvers, then lose access to your bonus action, and then lose access, and then only have one action a turn? I like that. Ugh. Also, hi, Chris Ovos. Hi, Chris Ovos. All right, and Chris Ops, give me a bui right now. We and we we've gone along and in, in yeah. really? process him, and just before you guys get into the next thing, we don't have to change out the uh, the neck or the diamonds uh, up there, but the human hand and the the tail, yeah, I would I would like those to be changed, just a little bit acted. Okay, sorry. I, feel like... I was I was saying like the 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 neck and the diamonds up on the neck. Like we don't have to change that since I we're relatively far along in the process. But the human hand we and can... the diamond at the end of the tail, I would like. We can still adjust that. Oh, okay. I mean, it's not yeah, your again, fault that I'm... we didn't notice. That's fair. Well, again, I'm just looking at the at the reference. And um, that's why I'm being pedantic. But I see those fires coming along great, though. <laughs> yeah. Me liking it a lot.
So stage one, lose non-defensive maneuvers, keep movement. Uh, what was stage two? I know stage uh, three lose is quick action. lose quick action. All right. Lose quick action. And just to make it more worthwhile, we're also going to include defensive maneuvers. All right. Well, except for cleanse, but yeah. Right, except cleanse. Um, and I was thinking that for distracted, what if uh, we went with... Because uh, I'm trying to think about like some other things that we could use so that way we're not just like hard focusing on a couple. Obviously, perception would be a good one, but what about something like initiative? I like it. I like the kind of like the difference between ignoring it and like say catching the gold coin out of out of midair that was attempted to distract you, sort of thing. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah. Okay. I like initiative for resisting distracted. Yeah. Are we going with different activists and and comments? You were cutting out for that. Oh, sorry. I was I was I was asking. Are we going with different attributes that can resist different status elements? Yes, different skills yep. are used for resisting different uh, conditions. Yeah. Okay, that sounds cool. Yeah. So, like for example, like you know, uh, resisting blind will be a perception check. Makes sense, actually. Yeah, I like that, actually. I yeah, think... Or to resist hunger, you cook. I think for these, let's go ahead and try and standardize to two options. All right. That way it's also not as punishing, like, you know, if they haven't put anything into insight. So they at least have a different option. So for then... Berserk, maybe insight or etiquette? Yeah, that makes sense. Etiquette would actually not be a bad one. Etiquette so then we could like um, standardize this to one being the um, the brute force method, and the other one could be the evasive method. So like etiquette might be the evasive, whereas like I don't know, what was the other one that you had? Insight could be like the Insight. brute force one. I don't know if we'll have it specified that way. Yeah. Um, I just think it's better to have probably two options, so that way there's less of a risk of it being like, oh, I don't have anything in either of these. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see here. For blind, what were our other... Perception's really good for that one, and, well, if somebody dumped perception, I'm gonna... I'm gonna smack him upside the head. But, <laughs> just in case... Um, um, creates a new character, dumps perception immediately. <laughs> <laughs> investigation? I was about to say investigation. Yeah, that sounds about right. Either that's that or appraisal, right? actually. What about appraisal? Mm. Both would work. I'm just more throwing it out because I thought about that one, too. I think hmm. for blind, I like investigation more. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. So then we've got two for Charmed, two for Confusion, for Distracted. We currently only have Initiative. Um, we could do per uh, Appraisal for that one. I was about to say, Appraisal would work pretty well for that one, I think. Yeah. Appraising, what, appraising whatever, what is, whatever is just running you to get out of it. Yeah, basically, like, forcing yourself to focus. Yeah, I wouldn't know how that feels. I know, right? Never did that before. Alright, so next one, disabled. Before I even put that in, let's go ahead and figure out if we want to even keep it. Because... Oh. Yeah. 
it disables <laughs> the last move used by the target. So yeah, actually, that's not too bad. Yeah. We I was about to say yeah. disabled. Still, still, yeah. It's pretty. It's pretty much how it works in Pokemon. Yeah. I remember I that we. Think... I remember that we had it before. Like, it was whatever move that the the person has is disabled for the enemy as well. But that doesn't work with move creation. Yeah, that's um, that's in prison. Oh, okay. Never mind. Uh, yeah, that one may go. be fully removed or completely reworked. Yeah, that turned that turned into sealed, which is what we were thinking about turning into, um, like basically like audio cut off, like sealing yeah. there. Senses. Well, not senses, but like you know the auditory part of it. Ah, because we have a different one for blind. Noted. AK mutant deafened. Yeah. So I think with disabled. It's going to be a situation where the stages are basically you can have up to three moves disabled. All right. I think we're going to drop the combat maneuver thing. Um, yeah, because I don't think I think that at most, even if you get fully like like screwed over by disable, uh, you should still be able to strike. Yeah, agreed. So Unless for this one, that. it's you can have they can disable up to three moves, basically. Yep, makes sense to me. Uh, actually, we're gonna say the last attack. So that way, yeah. if, you know, they're up against a pretty much purely weapon-based character, they can still use it on them. Yeah. That works. Strike, is striking with a weapon not cons not considered a sort of move? No. Ah. Strike is specifically not considered an attack because that way we can have it where even it, like in the case of disable, you can we can just say it disables the last attack, but you can still strike. So strike yeah. can't ah. be strike is specifically a maneuver and not an attack. Yeah. Ah. Different classification. Noted. Um, you know, do we want there to be, do we want to keep drawn? We're, we're still not done with disabled. Well, I know, I'm just more, like, while wow, you're just writing shit up. Let, let me focus on one thing at a time, please. All right. I know you want to move on, but yeah. <laughs> well, I really want to try and get through at least like battle statuses before the the squirrel game. Squirrel game. All right, if no attacks have been used, a roll is used to determine what is disabled randomly. Yeah, sure. Um, I think this is one that should probably use integrity. I like integrity for it. Um, what else to have? Maybe subterfuge. I don't know if I like subterfuge for it. Uh, the reason that I was thinking of it is because it's effectively, like, you know, disabling it and, like, locking something away, and subterfuge is lockpicking and the like. Uh, I can somewhat see it. Yeah, that's fair. That, that was just more something that I was thinking of. Uh, 
Uh, what else would we really use for it? Um, I'm leaning towards presence. Mm, sure. Presence works. Yeah, that kind of force of will thing. Yeah. I, for a moment, I was thinking maybe survival, but no, that doesn't work, work as well as presence. Yeah. I feel like one of these is going to have, like... Hmm. I don't know. One of these is probably going to use subterfuge with that, like, thought process behind it, but, you know. I agree. Hard to tell right now. We'll find a use for it. Yeah. Um... But I think that that's like a fun interpretation of the skill that. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Um. So drawn is a kind of complicated one, but I also see a lot of good use for it for strategy and such, especially for like a tank character, you know, bringing people, bringing enemies in to you. Yeah. Yeah. I was just more like curious because like we do also have like taunt as a separate thing. Well, Taunt is... So but Taunt would have them move to you on their turn. Uh... Well, so taunt, taunt is different in that it specifically makes them target you. Whereas Drawn brings them to you. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is two different things that I kind of accomplish the same thing through different methods. All right. Well, maybe we can... <sighs> it could this also... Drawn can also be used in kind of a teamwork way of, okay, get everybody into this spot, and then, you know, the tank is pulling everybody in, and then you got the... Uh... Basically just doing an air result. I don't know what... Smite. I don't know what that Basically, is. Basically, he chains everyone around and brings everyone to his current location and stuns them. Yeah. So, like, AOE literally the entire yeah. enemy team just goes to exactly one spot. Yeah. And then drop that okay. AOE and hit them all. Yeah, so, um... However, one thing that I was thinking of is, what if we combine it with Repulsed into basically, like, a generalized movement, like, control condition? All right. What would we call it? Uh, maybe compel? No, that, that implies something else. Ah. There's also no reason not to have... Displace? Oh yeah, displacement. Raijin, your art is fantastic as well. Yeah, I love your art, Rai. Yes. Um, don't compare yourself to others. Just simply try to be the better than the last previous version of yourself. Try to improve beyond that. I feel like... I feel like having it be... Having them combined could provide a little too much power to this condition because being able to just be like yeah i want you to be pulled towards me i want you to be pushed away etc etc or this turn you're being pulled towards me next turn you're being pushed away i i i mean i guess we could have it be a maybe 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 could it specify that you can that a, a move that can only do one e one one at a time like just you can only ever like pull, uh, in, in, in a turn yeah i 
like maybe 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 restricted that way so that there's not like, too much power in, in movement because that is a, that is a legitimately powerful effect yeah i th i think that the easiest way to do it is just to have them separate still all right fair enough Still, they, they could probably still be resisted by the same things because they're basically the same thing, just in different directions. Though I think instead of the nearest character, it will be the source of the effect. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And you could, you could, and with with that, you could have it like some, you could have it like it's something that it's it's some it's some sort of energy that's pulling something towards it instead of character pulling something itself, or away from it, whichever it is. So I'm thinking that stage one of drawn means that you cannot move away. Like, like you can only move if you move, it can only be towards the source. Uh, stage two, you are forcibly moved towards them. Stage three, you're moved close. You're moved towards that source hard fast enough to cause damage. Yeah, that makes sense. Hmm. Uh, I feel like this is another one that probably should be resist through integrity. I was thinking athletics or integrity. Yeah, I was about to say athletics or integrity, but, you know. Looking pretty good, Whiskers. Yee. Yeah. I'm loving it. I'm going to hop off the call for a bit and be back for game. I just need to take these headphones off for a bit. I've okay. With yeah, them today. See you soon. Sounds good, Ara. Okay, Ara. Later. Yep. should probably do something productive. I'll do that after the picture. <laughs> what are you planning to do? Um, just some descriptive writing so I can finally publish a thing onto FA and, and move on to something else. Sounds good. Yeah, I was thinking of doing a recording tonight, but I'm still irritated from work. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. It's what it is. What it is. Hats to right. Hats to right on. And since it's basically the same, I'll just copy and paste this for doing repulsed. Yep. And, you know, adjust the wording. Oh, I just thought of a joke. What's up? Oh. Okay. So, a man goes over to the city, right? 
It's one of one of those fancy cities. We'll say Paris. And he comes mm -hmm. across a guy who is painting a picture. And the man looks upon the painting. He's like, hey, that's actually pretty good. Hey, could you do could you do one of me? And the artist says, we. Oui. And he you know, he gets he gets his little easel out and he begins he begins sketching out everything he needs to sketch out. And at the end of it, he presents the man with the picture. And the man is like, it's like, oh wow, that, that looks pretty good. Why like, I mean that that looks almost just like me. And then suddenly the artist hands him a sack of cash or like uh, coins. And the man's like, well, what, what what is this for? And the artist says, Well, around here, we give people a draw and quarter. <laughs> I see there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it could be, it could be, it, it could be definitely phrased better for the joke, but like I just came up with it. You'll have to excuse me. <laughs> I I like that. I think for all of these uh, combat conditions, we're gonna have them where, uh, in they bypass integrity. Yeah. Conditions. Bypass. Whiskers, Bypass. don't forget the uh, the edge of the hair, please. All right. Uh, uh, what do you want with the edge of the hair? That it's just colored the same blue as like the rings and stuff. Ah. Yeah, he 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 had done it before. It's just um. It's just a detail that must have been missed this time around. All right. Uh, next up would be fear. Here's an interesting one. So how do we feel about Fear in general. <sighs> this effect causes the target to become afraid of the user or the area of effect. A target has a chance per turn to be forced to move away from the user or the center of the area of effect. This movement costs an action when it happens. It does not provoke attacks of opportunity. The afflicted cannot willingly move closer to the source of the fear effect. Uh... I feel like presence. Um, okay, so for fear, what if stage one is like, you know, plus one difficulty on accuracy or damage, like which whichever one uh, against the target. Against the user, sorry. And then the next one is can't get closer willingly. And then the second one is tries to escape from being near the target or by, be, by the user. Sorry. Could, yeah, the, the final stage could just be blindly fleeing and, you know, whatever yeah. directions best makes sense. Yeah, and that movement would probably provoke attack of opportunity to make because it'd be like the final stage. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense to me. They're not, yeah, they're not thinking of defending. They're just thinking of getting away. Yeah. So how how does that sound? Okay, run it by me again, please. Stage one. Uh, let's go. I don't know which one you want to do, but either plus one difficulty to accuracy or damage against the against the target. Sorry, against the user. The target against the user. Stage two cannot get closer to the user and stage three attempts to flee and this movement can provoke attack of opportunity sounds good i would say plus one difficulty to both accuracy and power in that case only yeah if it's only against the user then yeah yeah
Considering, considering you guys mentioned uh, that like an area could cause this effect, I just find it amusing. It's like, like oh, this land is evil. It makes me feel fear. Tries to hit dirt, misses. <laughs> well, yeah, it's just that these also have like narrative effect. This is just the mechanical. Oh, I know. I'm just, I'm just being silly. All right. So resist for this one. Uh, presence. What and I think so. I also think survival could, could be a good one for that one. Damn. Yeah, survival and I feel I feel like presence is, is presence kind of is a good with. one. Most because it's like bravery. Mm -hmm. Could do presence or appraisal. Yeah, nice. appraisal. Because appraisal is all, appraisal is also specifically determining. It's used to determine how strong an opponent is. I feel like ah, that would use appraisal answer, though. It could, however, like you know, basically like, um, basically sort of like under the understanding of. If you know a thing, you won't be as fearful of it. Because you what? actually know what its capabilities are. True. But what about, and just tossing this out, what about etiquette? Being able to just hold yourself, you know, firmly, even though you're afraid. Hmm. I'm actually kind of like it. Actually. I personally still feel like appraisal fits best. Yeah, because the thing about etiquette is that for etiquette, where is it? Uh, etiquette is more about your skill with language, your knowledge of protocols and customs, and can even assist with translating foreign languages. Mm. So okay. this, it doesn't exactly. So it's not necessarily how you hold yourself, then. Yeah, that's more of a fair enough. thing. Fair enough. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm still on the fence with appraisal though, because it's like, like, hey, we we got this thing, this like horrible thing. I'm gonna analyze it. Yup, that's really bad. Well, okay, so this is like an extra fear effect. It doesn't. This is like being placed upon you as like an effect. Yeah. This yeah, is not like, you affecting your natural ability to be afraid of something reasonably. Yeah, yeah it's not natural fear. It's literal, mag it's literal magical fear, for for lack of a better term. I don't know. I mean, obviously, it, it's your guys' thing, but I don't know. I'm just on the fence with it. Yeah. Like, it makes sense, but at the same time, it just doesn't quite fit to me. Yeah, I feel like appraisal's the best we got, though. As far as that goes, the only other one that I could see would be investigation. What is yeah. what is the, what is that survival skill do again? Uh, survival um, is primarily like your ability to track, uh, tie ropes, uh, generally forage. You know, forage. Ah, what about what about survival? I don't necessarily like survival for fear, resist for resisting fear. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh. Whiskers the hair. I messaged Whiskers, but uh I think he's really getting into this. I zone. have been I have been flashbang. <laughs> <laughs> we, we we'll get it fixed, don't worry. No no, I'm not I'm not worried about it. I just don't want Whiskers to go so far and then they're just like, oh I gotta backstep a bit. Monster Hunter flashbang. Yep. Um all right, next up is Flinch. How are we going to stage Flinch? That one's gotta be integrity. Well yeah, but just how are we gonna stage it? Oh, um well, I guess the effect can be stacked to leave the target flinched for multiple turns. Hmm. 
clenched. I feel like stage one would be just like slightly less defense. Yeah. Also, do we want to call it flinch or do we want to call it stun or? I kind of like stun. stun. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll call it stun. Yeah. Also, I'd I'd say for the resistance for that, I probably use. We'll we'll get to the resistance. We need to figure out how we're staging. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, I want to focus because, you know, getting too much going on, I'm going to lose track of things. Yeah, one thing at a time. Sorry. So. um, I kind of like the idea that uh, of stun just removing actions and it can be stacked to affect multiple turns. Yeah. Okay. And that's about the only thing I could really think of. The only thing that I'm, like, a bit wary of is stun lock. Mm. So, for the case of stun lock... Maybe as stage increases, like for advanced effect, it doesn't stack the it doesn't stack the turn. How about every single turn that it goes by that you have it on you, it like you know, like it'll automatically decrement by one, obviously. And it may only allow the initial chance to resist though, so I'm just how do we balance it for the case of stun lock? Well, real quick, I sent you that uh, Ragon not finished, but how's that looking? I like it a lot better. It's 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 looking good. Anything it's else to change? Hmm. No, I, I I assume that the brightness will probably get turned down a little bit. I I guess. Well, I mean, don't assume. Just if you want it darker, then <laughs> maybe just a little bit darker. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna automatically just make it darker. So you know. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I don't know what other steps um, Whiskers is doing. Well, that is a fair thing. For me personally, it's like... I, I know some artists are really... They get annoyed when you ask them about stuff. For us, bring it up. Even regardless of anything, if you're not certain, just bring it up. Okay. Um, yeah, about the only thing then is just just make it a bit darker. That's okay. it. Make it more of a I don't know. What's what's not not noir? <laughs> <laughs> what's that word? That, Bedroom that, lighting. Yeah, more or less. Dim. Dim. Okay. But obviously not so much so that like the darkness of the sh of the shadows already present and the fur just kind of like you know you can't really see the details. Those filters, those filters that were on for a moment, they were kind of reminding me of that uh, horror game called World of Horrors. <laughs> yeah, we'll call it Noir Gone. <laughs> noir Gone, yes. Noir Gone. Um, but seriously, uh, for Flinch, like the only thing I could think of is. I feel like this should be one of the ones where, like, as the stage increases, quote-unquote, like, the more flinch they have on them, the harder it is to flinch them. Or stun them, sorry. Mm-hmm. Because it'll automatically decrement every single turn. So what if it just becomes, like, plus one difficulty to affect with stun, like, as the stages increase? Or maybe, like... You know, maybe maybe give the 
maybe in, on, on stage two give the give the enemy ex, give the enemy extra dice to defend themselves and in stage three increase the difficulty how about every single turn as well they have uh there's the opportunity every single turn to get rid of an extra stage because I want flinch to be useful, but I don't want it to stun lock. Yeah. That's yeah. I think Nobody like what we could do is for each stage of stun on you the this might have already been said, but uh the uh difficulty to resist is lowered. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had it uh, you know, di the like uh, the difficulty to put it on was raised, but yeah, this also works. Yeah, that works too. I have a question for everyone. Yes. What's up? Do we up? think, and this is this is in the regarding the picture, um, do we think since this is an Ombreon Chillet hybrid, do we think the ring should glow a little? I'd say yes. I wouldn't be against it. Yeah, that sounds. I like I like the Ombreon glow, so yes. I'd say let's go and put that in, and that could be the final detail of the picture then. Just this very slight glow from all the those blue parts. Yep. But yeah, so I, I think that uh, lowering the difficulty to resist the, like, having more stun on you, the more stun you have is a good idea. Now, to make it easier, I, I, I think the best thing is... Because it kind of defeats the purpose of stun if they can just roll to resist. Uh, I, I think no rolls to resist stun, but for each stage of stun that you have on you, your soul score goes up by one. I think that would be the simplest way to go about it. Maybe. We're probably going to have to revisit this and balance it, though. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So it all. I will also say that stun also only disables one action. So if you have just, if you get hit oh. by it with only one stun, it's only going to disable one of your actions on your next turn. Oh, okay. Yeah, because for flinch, it just straight up capped the move, capped the turn. You could only move, disengage, or pass. Like that is how flinch worked. So fair. Mm -hmm. Well, do we want to just have it be where it disables the next action? Next action. And then after that, it goes, it decrements the, the stun counter. And so if you have two stun on you, it will cap the entire turn, but that's it. Yeah. So it means someone has to have advanced effect stun, put it on you, and then it works for your entire turn. Yeah, that works. Um, yeah, obviously this one's probably going to be integrity. Well, no, there's no resist for this, so we don't need to worry about that. All right. I was, I was going to recommend maybe ac acrobatics for resisting, but since we're not resisting then. Yeah. Nice. We have four left. And nice. One nice. of them is pretty, pretty simple. Let me just write this down. I gotta change reactives. Mm. There, I'm quagging now. Quagging.
Uh, one important thing about stun is that because it just removes the next, like, actual action, it doesn't remove your ability to do a quick action on your turns. Good point. Oh, nice. The next standard action. Yeah. Yeah. I'll specify that. Because then otherwise people will just go, oh, stun? All right, my next action is going to be a quick action. Quick action is stunned away, and I have both my actions. <laughs> yeah. Uh... All right, so I put in here, this disables the next standard action. There is no resistance to this effect. However, for each additional attempt to stun, your soul score is increased by one per level of stun, or per current level. Per by one per current level of stun. So if you have three stuns on you, your soul is increased by three against another stun. This only impacts new sources of stun, so someone can apply two stuns on you with one move. Uh, does not disable quick action. Uh, what else do we want worded in here? Uh, even if you're stunned, you can still evade like normal. Because <laughs> that'll actually probably be one that people might be considerate of. Just because, like, you know, most people think of stun like can't act at all, so. Yeah, that, yeah, that's what I was thinking. I'm just thinking of, like, an unconscious guy on the ground and you're trying to beat him with the stick and he just keeps rolling out of the way despite being un practically <laughs> unconscious. <laughs> The soul, in the soul increase for each for each soul level kind of reminds me of, of Darkest Dungeon. I think that's pretty much how they hand stun stunning effects in that game. Yeah. Really increase the um, resistance to stun for the for the for the next time you try to stun the enemy. Stun locked into death. Mm -hmm. Alright, you can still evade as normal. This only disables the next standard action. Each action disabled reduces your stun count by one. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, yeah, I guess. Alright. Um... So, next up would be Protected. Uh, one sec. Let me uh, send this off to Ragon. All right. Oh, ooh, yeah. This is another work in progress, but... Ooh, let me get your opinion, Zim. Should the tips of the hair also glow? Yay or nay? Mm, why not? All right. I'd say that... that that then everything else looks excellent though though i like the lighting here a lot better it looks it looks wonderful it does look very good yeah i like so, the fact yep. that you can see slight like you know highlights under the uh covers too yeah mm -hmm. me too yeah Yeah, Roharu. Might just we just might have to get another one. Yee. Yeah. I'm definitely down. Heck yeah. We'll we'll talk to you a little bit later about it, Zim. Sounds good. All right, so it is time, but is NJ here? This match attack game might be still going on. Did you say match attack? Yeah. Jeez, that's the thing. I, think I, I know he plays. I know he plays a match attack game before this. <laughs> Or at least it's called Magitek. I don't know. You just mentioned it to me before. Ah, oh, I see. 
might be running over a bit. Let's see, match attack. Chronicles RPG has got to be it. Huh. All right. So protected. While yep. I wait to hear from Anja. Uh, do we want it to? I feel like this is one more like the stages is just how many uh, attacks it can take. What about you? Mm -hmm. Wait, uh, yeah, sounds good to me. Same, uh, same either incre increase how many attacks you can take or increase the area of it. Nah, just attacks. Hmm. Okay. Uh, the, the thing about, uh, like, more area is that uh, there's also, like, things where you can purchase effects additional targets. Ally. Ah, right. I so. almost forgot that. True. Gotta buy, gotta buy that for Elba's once I get a new feed. Alright, another uh, work in progress for you, Rygon. Alright, let's take a look. Yeah, the hair looks, the hair does look better. Alright. Yeah. I, I honestly can't th uh, see anything else that needs to be adjusted. Looks excellent. Whiskers has done a very good job with this one. I'm very happy. Indeed. When we're talking later, Zim, remind me to uh, to send him a tip. I think he I think he outdid himself with this one. Will do. Wonderful. All right. So obviously there's no need to resist that one either. It's just more of self status. Um So I guess what do we feel about the whole sealed being like effectively deafened and silenced? Real quick, protected, this effect blocks the next incoming attack on the target. Yep. Uh do we actually real quick, do we care about damage versus status or is it just attack? I'm gonna specify attack. All right, so just just attack. So strike would get past it. Yes. And status moves would get past it. Correct. Yep. I'm partially wanting it done that way to, so that way uh, it, it doesn't. You know they, because it's just the next one coming in. It'll be something that they are, you know, protecting against and the, you know, an enemy can't be like, well, I just growl at you. Ha ha, your protection is gone. <laughs> yeah. Um, just wanted to check for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, so how do we feel about the sealed being, uh, like deafened and silenced? I think that's good. I think that's good for me. In my opinion. So, like, you know, stage one could probably be silenced as that's the more minor one to begin with. Stage two could probably be deafened and silenced. And then stage three, what are we thinking for stage three? What could that be? Deafened, silenced. Um... Mute? No. No, that's already that's already silence. Yeah. Like, muted silence. I mean maybe um, the, uh, we could always mobile? be Maybe. Uh but that's maybe. Uh could also go with no nah, that that might be too mean, but we could always do something where like you know, seals non basic moves. Like that aren't typed to basic and then that could be changed over for different things. But that might be uh, too much. Sorry, give me just a moment to uh, take care of art stuff. Yep. Okay. Yay, art. Uh, so what do you guys think about that, at least, while Zim's away? I do feel like that's a bit too powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, is there any maybe, other... Maybe seal a random one? 
No, nah, like, was it random? That's that's what Stand disabled does. Uh, if they haven't used to move. Thank you for that follow, Alucard. Wait, is that the crimson fucker? What? Tell me, are you the crimson fucker? Uh -huh. I'm guessing that is a. It's a reference. Team four star. Uh, yeah, the team abridged. four star thing. Yeah, uh, Helsing a bridge reference. Bridge. It's like that sounds. Follow me at the crimson there. fucker. <laughs> There I remember now. Is the finished piece for Icon? Very much appreciated. Thank you. Oh, wise. Maybe, to maybe be sure to tell Whiskers he did a very excellent job. Maybe, maybe, maybe stretch to you for seal instead of uh, instead of sealing another sense. Maybe, maybe you it... just be, maybe you it could be an increased difficulty in something. Uh, could also seal your sense of touch. That could be too. Yeah, maybe seals all senses. Except, well, not all, because then blind would be well, useless. That's fair. So, like, I'm thinking, oh, like, man. sense of touch. Touch. I could, I could also see, like, taste. This is be like, oh, man, that wizard took away my sense of taste. I already think it tastes like mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, what do, you, what, do you, what do you think about that, Zim? I was still dealing with art stuff. Okay. I'm just questioning how useful the sense of touch would be, but also... Hmm. Hmm. No, sense of balance? No, that doesn't... What if it doesn't... Hmm. What if it doesn't, like, make you blind, but it limits how far you can see? Oh, nice, Rob. Thank you. And hello there, Zakoya. Thanks for that follow as well. Okay, what are yeah. we thinking for sealed? So, stage one, uh, can't talk, silenced, mute, whatever you want to call it. Uh, stage two, deaf. And then stage three, what I was thinking is that could be you can't see beyond a certain distance. So, not total blindness, but partial blindness. Yeah. Like, you can only see a certain distance away. So that way it's impactful without stepping onto blindness territory. Um... Hmm. Well, goodness, I, feel like it, I feel like it needs a little bit more oomph. Like, that's good, but maybe another effect on with it? Something else gonna, that's minor? I was gonna say... If if we if instead of adding an, another sense to seal, we could make it so that it makes it difficult to do to do something with dice. Maybe no, like one thing that I was thinking of is that if it seals it like from only like basically like your vision from like a certain distance out, it could make it so that way you can't evade attacks coming from outside of that range. No. How about potentially this? Sorry, Zoom. Do you guys use a system where, like, you have a swift action, full action, stuff like that? Yes. yes. What about having everything go up one tick? So, like, a swift action turns into whatever step is right above that. So a quick action becomes an, a quick action becomes an action? And then an action becomes a full action. Yeah. And then full actions are already full actions, but... I kind of like that idea. Yeah, that's good. Like uh, maybe maybe an action can count for two actions. Maybe maybe sealed could be stage one is uh deaf and blind. Or not blind, uh deaf and silenced. Stage two uh Increasing action cost. And then stage three. Kind of pulling from the original spirit of the move. Uh, the effect is moves are disabled. Okay, that, that works. Yeah, I, I can. I think that would be fine. All right. 
Ah, this picture's so good. I like it. It's very good. Me yeah. too. And this one will unfortunately be the last one for right now. Oh, well, you know what? Uh, there's only two left on battle status effects, at least. And that was the big column, so that was the big section. Yeah, fair. And actually, I guess we could get through those real fast. They are pretty straightforward. Yeah, the, I did say the last ones were mostly simple. Yeah, so, all right. So, sealed. Uh... Disables opponent stage one mute and silenced stage two makes all actions go up a stage, i.e., quick becomes standard. Standard becomes full. Do we want to say that full actions are just outright disabled, or...? I think full actions should just stay full actions. Okay. Full remain full. And then stage three. All moves are disabled. Uh, and for what resists it? Hmm... Again, I'm thinking this could be one where subterfuge is a good one. I like that. Uh, and what about initiative again? Maybe not initiative, but I definitely like the idea of subterfuge. What about you maybe, guys? Maybe, yeah, maybe subterfuge and perception? Nah, I don't think perception is really the opposite of what's going on here. Hmm. Um, I, I blanked a little bit. What what is the effect? Um, stage one, it silence and deafens you. Stage two, it raises the movement cost, like of of oh, action, so the action cost. And stage three, line. moves are disabled. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh, subterfuge doesn't yep. quite make sense. So, uh, I'm thinking subterfuge and. I feel like integrity. Yeah, I guess integrity. Yeah, I could see subterfuge and integrity. Yeah. I am okay. glad that there's a good one that involves uh, subterfuge, though. Yeah. You know, whole of course you do, Shade. <laughs> hey, look. Shade only has, like, a three in subterfuge. Don't add me. Only I'll add you three. all I want. Only a three. Yeah. All right. So next up, taunted. Torment. Oh yeah, taunted and tormented. Yeah. I already scratched off taunted. Uh, cause taunted, uh, honestly, like pretty, pretty simple. Um, like, you know, stage one, like probably just like, I don't know about it. Do we want to enforce them attacking the target? If how about attacks the target? If capable. Maybe like, that target target attacks user if capable. Maybe that could be another safe. option. Another option would be instead of forcing it to attack, you could give them a penalty if they don't attack the taunted target. Yeah. But, like, say, I, I was thinking about, about that, but the problem is is that I don't want it to um fuck because the thing is, is that I want the later stages to like the early stages to be useful to the later stages if possible. I was just I was just about to say, maybe maybe forcing the attack the target to be a higher while attacking the target at a dis at a disadvantage be be the earlier stage. Well, that's what I was saying. Like, if able, so it doesn't force them to go. What I'm saying is like, it doesn't force them to go over to this person and attack them. It just says that if it's an available attack target, they have to take it. Ah. Uh -huh. 
Tier right. 2 could be, like, going towards them, if at all possible. And maybe, and, and maybe, and maybe Tier 3 is at, but with, but with a disadvantage? Yeah, maybe Tier 3 would be, like, increased difficulty. Yeah. I think... That'd be a better idea. I think stage one would be difficulty to attacking targets other than the user. All right. Uh, stage, but they can still, you know, they can attack other targets. Stage two, they are forced to attack the user. And then stage three, it could be that they have uh, plus one difficulty to attacking the user. Huh. How's that sound? Eh, yeah, sure. sure. I don't like that stage one is basically useless, but I mean, outside of like once it goes to stage two, but you know what? Sure. That's fine. I mean, is it useless? Uh, oh, because they can't, they, if stage one is uh, increased difficulty on attacking anyone that's not the user, stage two is they have to attack the user. Well, I mean, I, I don't think that's useless. I well, like, suppose, 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 yeah, but like, suppose you get like a singular opponent who uses taunt. Like, I mean, nothing's gonna happen. Ah, uh, fair. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, taunt isn't really an effect that you would use if it's one on one. It is. Yeah. It, it is. It is sadly something that you use to cover for somebody else. No, uh, there's plenty. There's plenty oh, of instances where what, people what? taunt on one on one. To throw I, one idea. On one. Idea. Um, what if at stage one taunt? instead of a difficulty attacking other people, they have to take attack actions and they can't use status. Oh, just like Pokemon Taunt. Yeah. Where it, like, you know, basically, like, taunts them into attacking in general. T tier 2 is, you have to attack me, and Tier 3 is, you're having difficulty attacking me. Sounds good. We could also yeah. have it be plus one difficulty to attacking other targets. We could, yeah, but you know, the yeah. main thing should probably be the, the actual, like, can't use status moves. Okay. You're taunted into attacking the user. Stage one. Plus one div on attacking other targets. Can only attack. Stage two. Well, can only attack and move. Yeah. Stage two was can only attack user. Stage three plus one diff on attacking user. And that'll be to accuracy. Power yeah. won't be affected. Yeah, yeah, and, and Ragon, yeah, you're right. I was, I was mostly, I was mostly thinking of of a a taunt as a, as a status rather than taunt as a, as as, a, as the concept itself. Yeah, I mean, it, it's easy to get lost in the mechanics for these kind of things. Yeah. All right, resist on this. What do we want? Um. So yeah, but... this is taunt. So probably insight. Like, basically knowing that, the, yeah. like, recognize that the opponent is just trying to goad you. Insight and presence? I was kind of thinking presence, yeah. Kind of yeah. reverse taunt? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, it's, it's just one of those things where you just have so much oomph of yourself that you're like, you can just shrug those kind of things off easy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling, I'm feeling like, I'm feeling like pre 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 we're getting a lot, a lot of, a, a lot of resistance. We are getting a lot of re resistances with presence, yeah. We can go back and modify it. To, to be fair, there are probably going to be less uh, presence resistances when we go over to the other, which is persistent. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. So, like, presence is going to be pretty good at resisting battle status, but not persistent. Makes sense. Or battle conditions instead of persistent conditions. Makes sense. All right. Now, what do we want to do for Tormented? Well, I mean, first first things, uh, Zim, wasn't that, weren't you going to call it? Yeah, this is literally the last one. Okay. 
Yeah. Because there was two left, one was Taunt, one was Torment. Are we going to do anything with Tormented? Do we want it? Honestly, I kind of feel like just doing away with Tormented. That's fine. Well, what was Tormented about uh, again? You can't use the same move twice in a row. So, like, turn after turn. Ah. I mean, that's, I mean, that, that's kind of already covered with Disable, so... Yeah. Yeah. So... I just went ahead and snapped it out. It, it it doesn't exactly seem like the most impactful and important, so... Yeah. But that is where we will be ending for this evening. At least for this side of things. So, thank you everybody for joining us so far on the stream tonight. Check out our website, zgfgaming.com. We've got links for our Discord, Telegram... Mastodon, Blue Sky, Patreon, and more. They are on the website as well as down in the description below through our link tree. Thank you to my patrons, tippers, and subscribers. It is your support that keeps this channel alive and going. I cannot do this without your guys' help and support, so thank you. I just Bye -bye. hit a button and something broke. Oh, God. Uh, don't do that. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining, uh, consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash ZGF gaming. It's one of the best ways to support the channel that you can also do so by simply sharing the stream around. And of course, don't forget that you can also pick up some commissions through whiskers or from whiskers. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube. But for now, thank you all so much for joining and I bid you the most fondest a duke. Bye-bye again. See you in a moment, everybody.